loves the party crashers, the ugly ducklings. Louisville, 40 minutes away from another possible name, national champs. Jeff Walls guiding his grandfather into New Orleans Arena. Can he continue to guide one of the great runs in the tournament against UConn? Well, UConn has dominated every team in their path, winning by an average of 35 points. Who will stay hot and bring it in the Big Easy tonight? Sisters, he lays it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slaughter does it again. Oh. She's on top of the world. Hottest of the hottest girls at home. The Louisville magic is working tonight. Got our head in the cloud. And we're not coming down. Shelby Swivel scores over Brittany. This girl is on fire. Got it. Look at that play. Oh, that's nice. That's a crafty play. Louisville has pulled off the near impossible. The Connecticut Huskies will play for the national championship. She's just a girl, but she's on fire. The Cardinals sent the defending champs Baylor home, then mighty Tennessee to get to New Orleans Sunday. A second half comeback was the difference against Cal. We'll see if the historic run will continue against the Huskies. They have been led by one of the great freshman tournament performances ever. Brianna Stewart is living up to her superstar potential as Gino Ariema is one win away from his eighth national title. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship Special, presented by Capital One. For the third time, New Orleans, home of the Women's Final Four. The last time, 2004, when UConn won it all. Husky fans out as well as Cardinal fans riding the wave from Atlanta after their men's team captured the national title over Michigan last night. Can they do it again in 24 hours? Tip-off right around the corner. Hello, everyone. Who's ready to have some fun? Kevin Agati here alongside my partners, Carol Lawson, three Final Four appearances, and Carolyn Peck, who won it all back in 1991 as 1999 as the head coach at Purdue. So, guys, history will be made tonight. No doubt about it. But what kind of history? A Cinderella run on one side when you're talking about Louisville, a five seed has never been here before, or on the other side, the dominance of a program that has won seven titles in 15 years. What do you expect to see tonight, Kara? I expect an up and down da game. I expect both teams to come out trying to push the pace, trying to get easy looks in transition. It's going to be a fun watch. And when you talk about the potential of Louisville, I mean, this could be the greatest tournament run we've ever seen. They're going to have to play tight possessions. They're going to have to be very disciplined because UConn throws so many talented players out at you like the freshman Brianna Stewart. I think this game is going to be decided early on, and I think it's going to depend on whether or not Louisville comes out and Shoni Schimmel is showtime. She needs to go out, make plays like you do in the backyard. That gives the rest of the team a lot of energy. If they make early shots, they could repeat and maybe have a game like they did against Baylor. They're going to need that in order to be able to hang with the Connecticut Huskies. They're not going to be able to win, scoring only 64 points. They're going to have to put up at least 80 on the board and play a complete 40 minutes. They have to come out firing against uh, UConn like we saw against Baylor because history has not been kind against the Cardinals when you look at this series. The Huskies have ripped off 12 straight Ws, seven of those by at least 20 points. 2009, UConn beat Louisville in the finals. And to find the only Louisville win, you have to go all the way back, 1993 in the women's tournament. Here are the Cardinals on why this will be different tonight. I think that um, just playing the Giants of the game, um, playing the Baylor, playing a great Tennessee team, we just know that it's possible. We believe in each other. We believe in the ability of our coaches to put a game plan together. So we just know that it's possible, and we're just going to go out there and play our hardest. I think we have a different team. And, um, you know, Coach can, came up, can come up with a crazy game plan, and um, we just have to execute it. You know, we're just, we're just being the underdogs and enjoying this. So um, 
I mean, I just think we're a different team, and we have a lot of people who mature, and we're doing a lot of things different. And um, I think everybody's really buying in, and that's what's really helping our team. Meanwhile, win by UConn will give Gino Ariema eight, eight national titles, tying him with the great Pat Summit of Tennessee. It would be his first since 2010. His first one came back in 1995, seven total in a 15-year span. He was asked what number eight would mean. I never set out to win seven, so I, I really don't have that as one of my as one of my goals. You know. Uh, if it were to happen, great. If it doesn't happen, um, you know, it's like um, we had two children, we had two girls, and it was like, man, wouldn't it be great to have a boy? I said, well, I don't know. I'm good. I'm good with two girls. And then, hey, we're having a boy. So it was great. So if, if my career ends at seven, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. If, if we were to win tomorrow, um, my first thing that's going to hit me is, um, wow, you know, only one other person's done that. But at the same time, when I see the three freshmen and the sophomores and juniors on my team, if I say, yo, guys, that's number eight for me, they're like, really? I don't care. It's my first one. It'll mean more to them than it will to me. No question about that. Now he's got a long way to go to catch Pat Summit for total wins, but with the W tonight, Ariema can match Summit's eight national championships. And with a win tonight, they would have 16 combined titles, exactly half the titles that have been held since this event started back in 1982. Louisville fearless attitude has carried them. It's present tonight. All right, this will be the fourth game for Louisville against the top two seed. Baylor, Tennessee, Cal. They won all three of them. No team has beaten the top two seeds here, four of them. Now they have a number one seed in front of them in UConn. And the theme for Jeff Walls, why not us? Why not Louisville? Well, why not Louisville? I mean, they are 40 minutes away, and this is a group that has played free and loose and easy. But I think they're facing their most significant challenge to date in this UConn team. One of the best defensive teams in the country, one of the best offensive teams, and they have five scores. They can't put three players on Brittany Griner and leave other players open. This is a complete team, and they get after you defensively. Why not Louisville? They have a chance, but they're going to have to play the best game of the tournament. Well, Louisville has that mentality of why not them because they have to stay focused on what they've already done. You mentioned that they beat Baylor. They beat Tennessee. Now, don't focus on what you haven't done because it's been a long time and it's only happened once that Louisville has beaten Connecticut. But if they stay focused on what they've already done, they come out with that swagger like they did against Baylor, might as well say, why not? Yeah, they were 24 and a half point underdogs against Baylor on Easter Sunday. Just 14 and a half tonight. They're closing <laughs> the gap. <laughs> why not Louisville, right? Hey, the reason why Louisville's here is because they knocked out Brittany Griner. Now, she won't be playing tonight, but you'll hear her open up and explain her struggles of standing out at six foot eight. And later, Jeff Walls discusses his coaching style, why it's different, and why it works for his team. I'm honest with my players. I challenge them in practice. They know when I get on them, if I'm yelling at them, it's not because I'm, I don't like them. It's because I'm trying to get the most out of them. Please here in the Capital One Cup Tourney Town area in New Orleans. Capital One annually awards $400,000 in scholarship money and the Capital One Cup trophy to the best NCAA Division I men's and women's athletic programs. Hey, we've seen some terrific performances by freshmen in the Final Four. Back in 1983, USC's Cheryl Miller did everything in the title game against Louisiana Tech. 27 points, nine rebounds. USC getting the win. 1996, Shamiqua holds claw of Tennessee. 16 points, 14 rebounds. In the championship against Georgia, the Lady Vols cruised the first of three straight titles. 06, Maryland's Christy Tolliver helped the Terps win the championship in OT against Duke. Hitting a three at the end of regulation, then two free throws in the final minute of overtime. And then Sunday night, Brianna Stewart leading the way. 29 points for UConn, snapping a four-game losing streak against Notre Dame and sending the Huskies back to the title game. 
And really, it all started in the Big East tournament for Brianna Stewart. She's been a completely different player. You see the minutes are up, averaging over 30 per game, and the points at 19, shooting over 57% from the floor. Brianna Stewart, on what has changed for her from the beginning of the season to where she is now? I think when you're a young player and you go into college, you rely on your physical ability because you don't know anything else. And you have tremendous success early on, which Bree did. And then all of a sudden, people start taking those things away from you. It seemed like she was afraid to make a mistake. She really wasn't playing with as much confidence as I had seen before. Most of it was mental. When you start second guessing yourself, stuff like that, your confidence goes down and then you're not playing well and then you're just frustrated. It's like an ongoing cycle. Got to the point where she played in one game, I don't think she scored. One of the, the lowest moments was the Baylor game. I did not contribute at all. Baylor scored 50 against us in the second half. I think Stewie was responsible for about 35 of those. She puts so much pressure on herself to be really good that when she's not, she kind of withdraws and really takes it personally. When the regular season ended, it was like, Stewie, we just need you to zero in for six games. That's it. And I think for a young kid, that kind of framed it in the, yeah, I could do that. And she's been great since then. Brianna Stewart is really carrying Connecticut. Once she kind of just started playing basketball and was confident and comfortable, this is the result, this is what we get. Here's Stewart, another big smile from the freshman. Putting up the numbers in the semifinal game of the National Championship Tournament is unbelievable. Stewie looked like she just showed up at a pickup game and said, you know what? When I'm open, I'm gonna shoot threes. When I got it in my hands, I'm gonna drive it to the basket. And I'm gonna have fun doing it. It was awesome. There's not much more you can ask for. And a year ago, she was in high school, the number one recruit in the land. Gino Arima said, if she comes to UConn, when she ends her career, she will become the best Huskies player in school history. And that is saying a lot, because there is a ton of talent. Career high, 29 points in the national semifinal. Now, Coach, when you look at Brianna here, and the 6-4, it's always about matchups. She's 6-4, she hit four threes on Sunday. So defending against her, this is no easy task for Louisville. There is no easy task because even against Notre Dame, Muffet McGraw used different players from different positions to try to defend Brianna Stewart. But because of her height and versatility, it's nearly impossible. You watch here when she catches it against a Chanwa, who's a post player, gives it up, recognizes that the defense goes behind the screen and has the confidence to knock down that three-point shot. In another possession, she's defended by Breaker. Breaker steps in, gives space, and Brianna Stewart is very patient. She reads and knows what she's going to do with the basketball before she catches it. Breaker closes out too close. Stewart makes her pay because she has the ability to put it on the floor. Now there's a guard that's guarding Brianna Stewart. Cable is now caught on a screen and why Notre Dame's going underneath the screen. I do not understand. And last but not least, Michaela McBride, one of the better defenders for the Irish with a bad closeout. Stewart recognizes that she's got a path to the lane. She takes advantage and I love the body control. She doesn't draw the charge. She goes around the defense and to finish. So whatever position you want to put on her, she's able to make a pay. And it can be a little deceptive. She's not just an offensive force, Kara. I mean, the long arms, when she comes out there and defends you, you're in trouble. She was really impressive on the offensive end there, semifinal win, and that's what garnered all the headlines. But I thought on the defensive end, she was equally as impressive as were the rest of her teammates. This is a UConn defense that has shut down opponents. It is because of their aggression, their intelligence. And take a look at this on ball screen defense against Notre Dame. Great active heads there by Stewart. Deflections. There were three players around it. They anticipated well. They understood where Notre Dame's hot spots were on the court. Stopping in transition will be key tonight. Look how many players level off their, their, their offensive assignments and then helping. There are times in a defensive possession where a play breaks down, where a teammate makes a mistake. 
Do you cover for your teammates? Stephanie Dolson does there and is able to make a play. And how about defending the three-point shot? We've talked so much about Louisville, how great they are from beyond the three. Shoni Schimmel, what does she like to do? Shoot behind screens. That's where she thinks she can get a free look at the basket. Kelly Ferris says, ah, uh -uh, Skyler Diggins, that's not a free look. I'm going to come in there and put a hand up and get a block shot. 12 blocks for Connecticut, and those defensive stops, they fuel that right there. They fuel their transition. They fuel their momentum. That has been the key to UConn all season long. They are terrific on the defensive end. No doubt, they're one of the most talented basketball teams across the board. They have the depth as well. They also have a great talent in entertaining each other <laughs> off the court. My hidden talent, trick shot. Model. The Smize. Freestyle rap. You know that things at the end have to rhyme. Oh! Female catwalk. Male catwalk. Half court shot. There we go! <laughs> Woo! Me and Stewie collect socks. Socks. Everybody likes to kick rocks. Rocks. Stewie gets all the blocks. Blocks. Done. We out. It's all mine. Woo! <laughs> That's amazing. What are you going to do now? I was going to win the championship. They're a loose bunch. How about this? A pair of big names from the women's game heading into the Hall of Fame. North Carolina, Sylvia Hatchell. She became the third woman to reach 900 wins in Division I history. And North Philadelphia product Dawn Staley went to three Final Fours of Virginia. And the ABO and WNBA is now the head coach at South Carolina. Congrats to them. Uh, we're getting you ready. Tip-off is right around the corner. And I'm sorry, but we have the best seat in the house. Our angle is beautiful as we are getting you set for Louisville. And UConn, 8.30 Eastern time, the national title game. Chance to defend uh, Baylor's national title at the Final Four, losing to Louisville in the Sweet 16. But yesterday, the 6'8 star was in New Orleans collecting her second straight State Farm Wade Trophy for being the best player in the nation. She joins a select group of multiple winners, including Maya Moore, Simone Augustus, and Nancy Lieberman. Of course, Griner also won the AP Player of the Year Award the last two years. Only she and Augustus have won both of those awards in back-to-back -back years. Now, while she was here, she opened up to our Holly Rowe on many subjects, including her new initiative against bullying. I wasn't the cool kid. I know people are like, what, really? Like, no, you weren't? Oh, no, I wasn't. Like, I, I wasn't always liked, uh, you know, big feet. Again, as I raise my leg, just the shoe, 17, massive hands, uh, soft, and I don't have this soft voice. I love my voice, I don't care. You know, I like being different. I see a, a lot of mean stuff through Twitter. You know, it's in one ear, out the other. I just like to just go see some of the crazy things people come up with. She's a man. I'll say it, hey, it doesn't bother me. Somebody's always gonna have something negative to say. But at the end of the day, like I said, you know, as long as you're doing right, just, just keep going. The defending champions fall in the Sweet 16. Louisville has pulled off the near impossible. It's been tough. Uh, you know, everybody wants to be at the Final Four. Everybody wants to play on this court. Nobody wants their season to end early. But, you know, when you have a lot of, a lot of expectations on your shoulders, you feel like you just have to live up to it. You have to be that person, get the balls in my hand, and, and just score for my team, and just do everything I can. I felt like I let down my team. You know, last year was an amazing year at Baylor. We went 40-0, won a national championship. You just can't get greedy. Sometimes you have to step over to the side and let somebody else, you know, experience that. And definitely it is an experience that I feel like everybody should should have. No, I didn't want us to lose or to, to end, but you know, now I have the opportunity to, to go to Phoenix, hopefully, and, and win a, a championship there. 
and you know I'll be winning it definitely for for Fe all the Phoenix and the Mercury fans, but also for everybody at Baylor. You know, uh, definitely if I could get that, I know everybody in Baylor will be smiling. First things first, WNBA. I just want to make that clear. That's that's priority. That's first. And you know, if I get a chance to to go and try out with the big boys, then hey, you know, I'm gonna do it. LeBron coming down the lane. That's my favorite player. Or Dwight. Anybody. I'm not gonna move. I'm not gonna try to take a charge and get dunked on. I'm, uh, if I get dunked on, I'm jumping and I'm gonna try to try to block it. Like I'm gonna go down with the fight. I'm not gonna sit there and just get posterized like this. You know, I'm gonna be up there trying to swat it and anything. You know, I'll wrap them up, something. It really can happen. If somebody doesn't push it, who will? You know, we'll be stuck. You know, just right here in the same spot. I wanna push push the envelope and open up doors for, for the younger girls to be able to have the same opportunities and, and be able to, to do things and and not get criticized for doing it. No doubt she is a game changer here, Karen Carolyn, but she has received some unfair scrutiny. When Mark Cuban, an owner, an NBA owner, invites you, and you're 22 years old, you're not going to say no. I don't care if you can't play basketball. You're going to say, yeah, I'm open to go to the NBA. What do you think of this NBA talk surrounding Brittany Griner? Well, I think that Brittany... If she em embraces it, it's about her. I support Brittany. If Brittany wants to do it, fine. But you've got to understand that now her college career is over, and part of being, living the professional life is marketability. I think that if Brittany wants to use it to market herself, absolutely. The thing that I don't want to see is that Brittany get used. This is her moment. It's her opportunity to be the number one player in the WNBA draft. Embrace that and celebrate Brittany Griner for her accomplishments that's gotten her to this point. Well, Brittany Griner has said that the WNBA is her top priority. And, you know, Brittany's agent has confirmed that they've had talks with Mark Cuban, and that offer was legitimate. He wasn't just blowing smoke. But let's take a look at this financially. Brittany Griner could actually make more money staying in women's basketball than she could playing as a second round pick on a non-guaranteed deal that's mid six figures she's going to command a salary like a diana tarasi overseas which is well over a million dollars and on top of that that contract is signed usually before the nba draft occurs so while i think Brittany griner is wants to do it and has been challenged to do it i think her best bet is to stay in the women's game because she can actually make more money doing that that's a great point to put in because you don't think about it in those big terms mm -hmm the money you can make in the WNBA. All right, now, we're going to open this question up to Doris Burke and Rebecca Lobo. And Doris, what do you think about the, the talk of Brittany Griner making that transition, not just to the WNBA, but the NBA? Well, obviously, I do not believe she can be successful at the NBA level, given the position that she plays at six foot eight. A lot of power forwards are six foot eight, Rebecca. But it doesn't necessarily, in your estimation, mean that she shouldn't give it a shot. She should have fun. She should have fun with it. When you look at the NBA draft, the guy who's taken last in the NBA draft, what are his chances of making the roster? But he's not going to turn down an opportunity to go there. Griner is from the, the Dallas area. These guys are guys she's watched as a kid growing up. Go, have fun, collect as much gear as you can, enjoy it. But that's after playing in the WNBA this summer. Right, and listen, there's been criticism over the course of her career. She has dealt with an awful lot of ugliness on social media, in arena, and sometimes on nights from her opponent. I don't think there's a circumstance or a criticism, Kevin, that this young woman can't, couldn't handle and handle gracefully. It's a great point, Doris, and let's not forget she was invited. She's not the one that put this idea out there initially. All right, the WNBA draft, guys, is six days away, and we will hear Brittany Griner's name, the first to be called with the Phoenix Mercury. Who goes number two? Where does it go after that? 8 Eastern on ESPN2, 9 Eastern on ESPNU. You can check it out next Monday. Earlier tonight, our Holly Rowe caught up with Louisville head coach Jeff Walls. Well, Coach Walls, you've used all kinds of different motivational tactics on this run through the NCAA tournament, whether it was Muhammad Ali or David and Goliath. What's the message to inspire your young ladies tonight? Well, I just talked to him. Uh, before our Tennessee game, I sat there and I told him, if we can get past th this one, I guarantee you we'll be playing on Tuesday night. And just got them to understand, I didn't make a shot in Sunday night's game. I didn't get a rebound. I didn't guard anybody. They did it. 
it's just trying to get them to believe in themselves. And now we're, we're at a point where they're, they're, there's nothing to show them. There's no gimmicks to give them. Uh, Coach Patino was kind enough to come by our pregame meal and, 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 and talk to the players today about their experience last night and just b- believing in themselves and each other. So we're looking forward to going out here and playing for uh, 40 minutes and having the o- opportunity to compete for a national championship. You told us that Connecticut's greatest challenge is that all five players on the floor can score. So how do you overcome that defensively? Well, we're going to have to try try and make sure we're making the ones that normally don't score 20 try to have to score 20. You know, I know what Dolson and Lewis and Stewart can do. You know, I've got to try to challenge a few of the uh, uh, other ones that have to take on a little bit more res- responsibility of scoring for them. But it is going to be a, a – a, a tough defensive assignment for us. I I really believe we're going to have to score between 75 and 80 to have a chance to win today. So our whole goal is to try and get the ball out and push it and see if we can't score because nobody's really done a good job of of holding them to uh, 50 or 60 points. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. One of the big reasons why Coach Walls is here is because Anthony to slaughter. How about 17 threes in the tournament? Six Sunday night in the semifinal victory over Cal. Speaking of wins, Heard a big roar moments ago. Rick Pitino walking out inside New Orleans Arena. Fresh off his national championship last night in Atlanta over Michigan. He's one of the big stars in the game in Louisville, making sure they are representing. Playing res ball, you got Schimmel, Shoni Schimmel, and her sister Jude, two Native Americans. Played with boys when they were six years old. And Shoney Schimmel's put on quite a show in the tournament. Our thing is survive in advance. Schimmel who has mad range. Shoney time. That kid's got no fear. Oh, Schimmel times two. When somebody shoots that good, you just got to keep fighting and hope that you can cut the lead. She's Brendan Geiner, but I'm, I'm Shoney Schimmel, so I'm going to keep going at her. We saw the Shoney Shimmel Show, and here it goes again. Well, she has, is averaging 18 points per game during the tournament. Three victories in seven days, and it started on Easter Sunday. A very special W over Baylor that prompted a family wedding. Yeah, and brought the family even closer. There's younger sister Jude. Here's Bob Holtzman. has pulled off the near impossible. To understand what happened after Louisville pulled one of the biggest upsets in women's basketball history, you have to go back a few years. I can remember when I was in high school, she'd just be like, hey, if you make a three, I'll give you five bucks. Okay, sure, I'm gonna go hit as many threes as you want me to hit. Louisville guards Shoney and Jude Schimmel were raised on the Umatilla Indian Reservation in Oregon by a mother and father who weren't above offering an occasional bribe. When we were younger in our AAU days, um, you know, like middle school, high school days, she used to tell us, if you win, I'll take you to Chuck E. Cheese. Our six-year-old, he was in the six to eight bracket, and their bracket, I'm like, hey, if we if we win, we get to go bowling, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Ice that, cream, yeah, bowling, ice cream, swimming, whatever, you know, what, something that, keep them going, they're like, oh, okay. Whatever level they're at, whatever motivates yeah, them. Yeah, whatever motivates them. So days before Louisville beat Baylor, During the 28-hour drive from their home in Oregon to the game in Oklahoma City, the Schimmel's mother made an unexpected proposal to her partner of 25 years. We didn't know exactly where we were, like Utah or somewhere in the middle of the night, like 3 o'clock in the morning driving, and it was just he and I, and he was talking about the game and how they're going to, you know, when they win, da 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 And finally I just go, yeah, right. I was like, okay, I said, if, if, if they win, I'll marry you. Mom said, if you guys go beat be Baylor, I'll marry your dad. And we're just like, wait, what? <laughs> like, are you serious? I just didn't think they were going to win. <laughs> I was talking to the team, and Jude, Jude was a little emotional. And I was like, hey, it's OK. We just won. You know, and then she told me, she's like, my mom and dad are getting married. I was really happy we won the Baylor game, but it was more, it was so much more emotional because my parents were getting married. My parents have been together for so long, and the, for them to finally, you know, tie the knot because of me, it's just crazy. So last Tuesday, after more than two decades together and eight children, Shoni and Jude Schimmel's mother finally married their father. They were emotional and excited for that as much as a victory. I mean, a victory was huge. 
but I think deep down inside it just meant even that much more for them knowing what they were able to accomplish for us too. And Louisville is on to the championship on Tuesday night. Tonight, the Schimmels will play the biggest game of their lives, and apparently the only thing on the line is a national title. So what happens if you guys win the national championship? I don't know, we haven't talked about that. You, got, you guys gotta get the scoop on that for me. <laughs> she hasn't said anything yet, you know, who knows? I mean, I'm just glad they're here. Five generations of the Schimmel family are here tonight in attendance in New Orleans to watch Shoney as well as Jude. Six men off the bench, averaging under 10 points per game in the tournament. Let's go back to Shoney Schimmel here and her impact. She has a swagger that is so electric on this team. You could feel it all the way to the 12th person on the bench. What does Louisville need from her tonight, Carolyn? Shoney Schimmel needs to be showtime Shoney. I didn't see it early in the Cal game like I did in the Baylor and the Tennessee game. She needs to start with that swagger, that attitude. If she's got to oh, really get me. emotional out on the court, Thank do you. that because the rest of the team yeah, feeds off of her. The rest of the team feeds off of her, and I think the rest of the team can't forget about her because we know that the UConn defense is going to pay a lot of attention to Shoney. And at times in that Cal game, they played four on four and were content to have Shoney be off to the side. She has to be front and center tonight. She has to push the pace. She has to be the leader of this team. Tony is kind of like a microcosm of what Jeff Walls is, you know, that swagger. And this team loves it. They feed off his energy. He goes past the X's and O's. He gives his team a green light to shoot the ball from beyond the arc 40 times. And guess what? It works with these players. Unconventional, but they're winning. He's unconventional. He's definitely a mad scientist. He's unpredictable. I feel like he just dreams this stuff and it just kind of works. In six years as Louisville's head coach, Jeff Walls has earned a reputation as one of the craftiest game planners in all of college basketball. He has so many tricks up his sleeve, you never know what he's going to come up with. I would describe him as being a very clever individual. It's not just chaos out there. We do run sets. We do run some plays. Walls' creativity was evident in Louisville's monumental upset over heavily favored Baylor. His defensive game plan against Brittany Griner has been celebrated, but it's a strategy they never got to use that may have been more innovative. The Baylor game, our jump ball plan was to send four on defense and one back, which was crazy. I would just pretty much just slide off to the backcourt and wait at the free throw line, and it would be four of our players playing against five Baylor players, and we were either get the rebound or take the ball out and just launch it <laughs> down court and get an easy layup. The Cardinals never used the four on five plan. Louisville won the opening tip and ran off to a commanding lead. I'm willing to try things like that. I'm willing to go out there and try to have some fun. Baylor, they've only lost one game in two years. So why I keep doing the same thing, try something new. If you can get your kids more relaxed and then something works, then when there's 30 seconds left and you're drawing up a play, they're going to believe it. Walls would have another trick up his sleeve, and with less than 90 seconds left in the game, his team clinging to a two-point lead, he called upon a play he saw in the Robert Morris victory over Kentucky in the NIT. Elton Jones throws it in with five seconds to shoot. I was just up one night with my wife. We're watching that NIT game, and they run an out-of-bounds out play with about eight seconds left and, and get a layup. I'm like, yeah, I like that. He's just like, we're going to call it. He was like, we have a play with someone called Morris. And I'm thinking, like, Morris, maybe he knows a guy. I don't know. You know, I wasn't going to question him. I know he knows his stuff. When we steal something from somebody, we give them credit for it. So we'll call it after their, their school. It's a play where somebody is at the block, and we just loop around. And that's what Megan did. She just looped around and had an easy layup waiting for her. Dinas, four huge points off the bench. They believe in what we're trying to do as a game plan. We all believe in him, and um, he's taking chances and risks, like, we know what he's capable of doing, so we believe in him. I trust everything he says. If he tells me to go lay on the ground and throw it up, if that's what he wants, I'm going to do it. You take a look at uh, Jeff Walls and the impact at Louisville. No team seated four or lower has won the national championship, and Connecticut has never lost the national title game. 7-0, they've won the last 12 games in this series. Louisville is the five seed. They love these odds. They really do. You know, they have a chip on their shoulder. They want you to count them out. It's really worked 
and a guy like William Wallace from Braveheart could play for Jeff Walls because he gives you freedom. <laughs> you can does. do whatever you want on the court. Just shoot the ball. It's an offensive player's dream. It's a shooter's dream. There is, it's very hard to find a bad shot within Jeff Walls' offense. And as someone who, who loved to shoot the basketball, particularly from beyond the arc, you never see his players turn and look at the bench if they miss a shot. They're not worried about it. He gives them confidence. He knows, and they know that he has complete belief in them. And so you might see it from other teams, a bad shot, look over and see what their coach is, is trying to say to them. Not the Louisville players. They have great belief. And he convinces them that they can guard anybody because he gives them these little tricks that they can put in their back pocket that they can pull from. You'll see a triangle in two. You'll see a diamond in one. And half the time, Jeff Walsh has said, sometimes he doesn't know what they're doing out there, but they believe that they can keep you offensively off balance. And when a coach gives you that kind of confidence that you can defend anybody. You walk out on the floor going, I can play with anybody. Louisville Hoops on top of the world. Last night, the ladies, while they were preparing for tonight's game, they were all huddled up and watching the men do work against Michigan in Atlanta for their first title in 27 years. Rick Pitino, the first head coach to win national titles with two different teams. Wow, what a run. Now it's the women's term, trying to become the second pair from a single school to win both championships in a year. The only time it's happened, 2004 with UConn. Kalena, the skater Lewis, getting ready. Watch her from three-point land tonight. If you're strong and confident, you're considered bitchy. If you cry because you fell over and your whole dreams since you were 12 go down the toilet, you're a crybaby. Women's tennis is a premier sport. We have to set an example here. Half of the human race is shut out of this profession for no good reason. It's just wrong. This can't go on. Someone has to speak up. There was a huge social shift at that time in how general Joe Public viewed women in sports. Well, is she smart? Can she hold up a conversation? Is she a decent person? Does she do community service? We don't talk about that stuff. Is she hot? Okay. People have a hard time understanding that what we do is possible. We didn't get equal money? Uh, oh, no, another fight. There were signs that said no women allowed. Did I really see that? Did that happen? It took me to a very dark place where I lost everything. Where I grew up in East Germany, it was live or die. You're going to be soft or you're going to be tough. You're tough. Absolutely. I think that group of people was meant to be to kind of start this wave. People think a mermaid. She was the original mermaid. Men respected what she did, and that changed everything. It's time for me to tell my story, because it's a real story. It's a life story. It's almost time for tip-off. UConn and Louisville. Stephanie Dolson, seven rebounds per game. This season leading the team, the health of her legs. That could be a key role here tonight for the Huskies. Another key role, all this talk about Louisville and how they shoot from the outside, knocking down those threes. But if you look on the other side, UConn has the best three-point shooter in the nation, Kalina mosqueda lewis As soon as I get a glimpse of the basket, it doesn't matter if there's a defender's hand in my face, it's just stuck, like I know where it's at. When I decide I'm gonna shoot it, nothing else is going on around me. I'm just focused on making that shot. Muscato Lewis with a three, way down to got it. Three pointer. Muscato Lewis drops in a three. And how many times has she hit nothing but net? Muscato Lewis, the top three point shooter in America. I think every time Kalina shoots the ball, Everyone thinks it's in, and when it doesn't, you can almost hear it. When she shoots the ball, half the time, you know, coach yells at us for not rebounding, but half the time, you think it's going in. Right now, she's on a streak that, 
you know, she could probably shoot it with her eyes closed and still hit more than 50% of her shots. She's hitting 49% of her threes. Another three-pointer. Another three. The shot is the exact same way every time. She catches it the same way, releases it the same way. You know, she has a very quick release. She gets her shot off very quickly. You know, if someone can be in her face, she can still get it off. That's something she knows she's good at. And when you know you're a good three-point shooter, every time you open, you're gonna shoot it and you're gonna shoot it with confidence. And that's why she's so successful. And she's only a sophomore. It's like, how much better can she get? Skata Lewis for another three. Effortless. Skata Lewis, a third three, you bet. Oh! That's the record for Kalena Mosqueda Lewis for three pointers made in a single season at Connecticut. You know, we've had some great, great shooters here. I think of Maya. Yep, Maya Moore for three takes care of that. Diane Tarasi. Tarasi for three. Super. For Kalena to be in the legendary mode of some of those other guys, she's going to have to make a couple that decide games. And once she does that, which she will, then people will be talking about her the way they talk about people that were just great, great, great shooters. That's why I came to Connecticut, to be turned into one of those players. And for anyone that goes here, the, the sky's the limit, as long as you're willing to work hard. Well, she leads the nation in three-point field goal percentage, 113 threes this season, and that is a school record. So she will bring the offense. And if you make a mistake, you're in some deep trouble, Louisville. So keep an eye on that. Back here with Kara Lawson and Carolyn Peck. Let's take a look at this Louisville defense. They can't afford multiple, mis multiple mistakes like we saw in that first half against Cal on Sunday night to, to play out here tonight. It is paramount that they have focused tight possessions on the defensive end. They have to be really good on that end of the floor. We heard Jeff Walls reference it. There's five players on this team that can score for Connecticut on the court at a given time. That wasn't always the case through their other upsets, but it's the case here. But we need to look at how focused they are here defensively against Cal. They'll switch some screens if they're guard to guard, but their focus here is to stay in front. Shoni Schimmel, the older sister, helps out her younger sister there. Yes, she doesn't have as great of a score that she's guarding, so they will challenge a couple of the UConn players to be able to do that. But what is critical is if they force a contested shot in the lane, they must get that defensive rebound and then look to attack out of transition. What makes their defense so important tonight is it gets them into transition, which is their best chance to score. Ball screens, not letting players get over the top, their length and their ability to chase after rebounds. It looked like early in that second half against Cal, there were six little, little defenders on the floor. They were getting a ton of deflections. Deflections aren't just a Rick Pitino thing, they're also a Jeff Walls thing. And Cal was held to only 20 points in the final 20 minutes of the game. That was the difference for Louisville. But when you look at them offensively, they like to shoot. They get a lot of shots off. How will they get those shots off tonight, Carolyn? They've got to be opportunistic and first and foremost, being able to score in transition. What Louisville has to do is when they get the basketball, take off with it. And you see there, Antonita Slaughter, Tony Schimmel with the handoff. Knock down the three. Bria Smith has got to get inside to that second interior of the defense to have the defense collapse in. Then she has shooters around her, and Louisville is very willing to make that extra pass, making the defense have to shift and getting the open shot. Once they get comfortable making shots, then they can execute in the half court. If you watch this, first Jude Schimmel, she's the first option. Shoni Schimmel comes around and then Sarah Hammond nails the screen. That leaves Antonita Slaughter open for the three. Jeff Walls will put five shooters on the floor at one time. Louisville has to when those shots are open. You have got to be ready to take those shots, take those shots with confidence and knock them down. How will UConn defend the arc? That's going to be a big question, especially in the first 10 minutes of this game. Brianna Stewart, well, beyond the arc, inside the arc, she was deadly on Sunday night. How about 29 points, a career high in the national semifinal. She's averaging 20 points per game in the tournament. We'll see her coming up. Last night, the women's team trying to become the second pair from a single school to win both championships in a year. The only time a school has won both in the same year, UConn, 2004. They did it in New Orleans as well. Diana Taurasi leading the group. 
And on the men's side, well, you see Gino celebrating. They got it done as well the night before. Emeka Okafer inside. Now, Gino is standing in Louisville's way tonight. He's with our Holly Rowe. Coach, when you face a team that really is believing in themselves like Louisville is, what kind of a danger is that to you? Uh, when you're on the kind of roll that they're on, uh, sometimes uh, it transcends what you're actually doing. You know, you say, well, we got to guard, you know, uh, their three-point shooting, or we got to guard their transition game, or we got to keep them off the backboard, all those things. But how do you guard against that aura that they seem to be, you know, uh, enveloped in right now? And um, you know, we just got to we just got to go out and play, you know, and and and, uh, uh, and, and make sure that we take care of the basketball stuff and let the, the basketball gods take care of the other stuff. You gave your players some tools today at Shoot Around to employ against their zone and some of the different things. What tools will be important tonight for your group? Well, I, I think sometimes um, teams, including ours, get, um, get themselves against zones or, or something that they don't recognize and just resort to just firing up jump shots, you know? And I wanted to make sure that we attack whatever defense they're in, man or zone, and we get the ball in the lane enough times and still shoot our, our fair share of threes. But uh, I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to be just, well, I don't know what they're doing, so I'm just going to shoot it. So hopefully um, they paid attention. But I'm glad you brought up that I went over that stuff in case they don't. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Al. Well, he seems relaxed as we are minutes away from tip-off. All right, time for predictions, Kara. Who you got? You know, I've been thoroughly enjoyed watching Louisville's run through this tournament. I mean, the magic that they've been able to create, but I think it ends here. I think it ends tonight. I think UConn gets the program's eighth, eighth national championship. I hope it's a high-scoring ball game, but I believe that it's going to be Connecticut. And one of the big reasons, too, is their well-conditioned and their depth. I don't think that Louisville's going to be able to outlast the Huskies. No fifth seed has ever won the women's title. And only one team has won eight national titles. UConn has a chance to join Tennessee. Enjoy your game. We'll see you at the half. Let's make this moment last forever. Playing without expectations is one thing that we're good at. I don't know that there's anything that we have to prove that as long as we're here, you're going to have to deal with it. No one expects us to win. We are a team to look out for. This isn't just a fluke. I came here for a reason, and we definitely deserve it. We want to show the nation that we're a great team. I want to win the championship and prove everyone wrong. We are confident. We're one unit. We're going to go out there and win this together. And Louisville is on to the championship. The bark is back in the Huskies. That eight title, if we were fortunate enough to get it, that doesn't change anything for me. It changes their lives forever. To be the Cinderella story, I mean, the glass slipper fits. There's no pressure on us. In the last year, the city of New Orleans has crowned the men's basketball and the Super Bowl champions. Tonight, the ceremony to crown the 2013 women's basketball champion inside New Orleans Arena. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One. And this evening, number one seed Connecticut, unbeaten in seven previous national title games. And the surprise of this year's tournament, the Louisville Cardinals in an all Big East final, playing 24 hours after the Louisville men cut down the nets in Atlanta. And inside the arena, we're close to tipping off what will be the last college basketball game of a tremendous season. Will it be another huge upset? or basketball royalty returning to the throne. We're about to find out. Welcome to New Orleans, everyone. Great to have you with us. I'm Dave O'Brien, my partner, Doris Burke. Holly Rowe and Rebecca Lobo will be joining us in just a little bit. Championship night, Doris. Yes. Great night here in New Orleans. The numbers five and eight are kicking around in your head because, well, it'll be eight championships if UConn pulls it off tonight and no five seed has ever won this tournament. Regardless of who wins tonight, before this night is over, history will be made. Either Louisville is going to complete what it will be the greatest run in NCAA women's tournament history, or Connecticut will win number eight, tying Tennessee, and with a young team, maybe no end in sight. 
All right, take us to tonight's final one on one of the season and two ladies who really had a coming out party in this tournament. One month ago, Brianna Stewart was an uncertain, unsure freshman. One month later, she has found her confidence and her game. A dynamic scorer from anywhere on the floor at six foot four, the length to be a dominant shot blocker. Yes, she can use that left hand around the rim. Yes, she can go off the dribble and shoot the mid range. She is playing hard and free in her mind and that has made all the difference. She can stretch it a three. Jeff Walls, Louisville's head coach, said we may have to make 15 threes. Well, step up to the plate, Antonita Slaughter. She made seven against Baylor in a monumental upset. She had six in the national semifinals. She can shoot it with great distance. Can she stay on fire tonight, Dave O'Brien? So we'll continue to set the stage for tonight's national championship. Soon we'll know if it'll be UConn for the eighth time or if it's Louisville. Can they make it two titles in two days? Give me back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One and 40 minutes away from deciding the women's champion Louisville and Connecticut here inside New Orleans Arena. Great to have you alongside Dave O'Brien along with Doris Burke. And let's go to public address announcer Agnes Green. And now to perform our national anthem, please welcome former Arizona State standout and New York Liberty All-Star Miss Kim Hampton. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the realm parts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the A shot there of Gina Oriema moments ago. The two head coaches, Jeff Walls and Gina Oriema, have forged a very solid friendship in recent years. In fact, when Louisville shocked Brittany Griner and Baylor in the Sweet 16, Jeff said, I got a lot of congratulatory texts, but Gino's meant the most, even though a lot of it was unprintable. Now, they really have enjoyed each other's company, and they go back and forth in a friendly and sarcastic manner. Head to head, though, Walls would like a win, and it's certainly like it tonight. He is 0-9 all time since taking over Louisville against Geno. And of course, Connecticut made history back in 2004 when both the men's and women's won the NCAA championship. Louisville's trying to do that here tonight. Time now for our Capital One starting lineups. We go back to public address announcer Agnes Green. And now, let's meet the starting lineups. 
at guard for Louisville, a 510 sophomore from Massapequa, New York. Number 21, Bria Smith. At guard for Connecticut, a 510 senior from Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Number five, Caroline Doty. At guard for Louisville, a 510 junior from Mission, Oregon. Number 23, Shoni Schimmel. At guard for Connecticut, a 511 senior from Plainfield, Indiana. Number 34, Kelly Ferris. At guard for Louisville, a 6'1 junior from Louisville, Kentucky. Number four, Antonita Slaughter. At forward for Connecticut, a six-foot sophomore from Anaheim Hills, California. Number 23, Kalina Mosqueda Lewis. At forward for Louisville, a 6'2 sophomore from Mount Vernon, Kentucky. Number double zero, Sarah Hammond. At forward for Connecticut, a 6'4 freshman from Syracuse, New York. Number 30, Brianna Stewart. At center for Louisville, a 6'4 junior from Overton, Maryland. Number three, Sharon Bales. At center for Connecticut, a 6'5 junior from Port Jervis, New York. Number 31, Stephanie Dolson. And introducing the head coaches for Louisville, Jeff Walls. And for Connecticut, Gino Auriemma. Let's bring in Rebecca Lobo and Holly Rowe now. They'll be coming to Huddles tonight. Rebecca, Gina Oriema predicted stardom for Brianna Stewart. She's become one in the Final Four. Well, Dave, Brianna Stewart's game really has transformed over the last month, and her coaches and teammates have played a big part in that. UConn's not a team that usually runs a lot of sets for individual players, but they're doing that now for Stewart. And her teammates are setting bigger and better screens within those sets. The best screener on the team is Stephanie Dolson. It does not have to be too complicated. Dolson knows all she has to do is get a body on the defender that is guarding Brianna Stewart. She gets the body on the defender, holds the contact long enough for Stewart to get in her natural shooting motion. One of the reasons she's averaging over 20 points a game in the tournament. And now for more on Louisville, we'll send it to Holly Road. Well, woven into the fabric of this magical run in the tournament for Louisville is the story of two little girls who grew up on the Umatilla Indian Reservation in Oregon. For Shoney and Jude Schimmel, they first picked up a basketball in a reservation tournament, and the game has taken them places they never dreamed they would have gone otherwise. They have inspired a community. Native Americans have driven for hours, come from all over the country to watch them play, stand in the cold for a picture or an autograph. Can their story inspire their team and their community for a national championship tonight? Well, five generations of Schimmels in attendance here, and Doris, because of their hoop skills, very stylish level of play, and the uniqueness of their story, they're hoping to become the female versions of the Red Sox star Jacoby Ellsbury, who's also a Native American, and promote other great athletes on reservations around the country. Shoney is their verb, so they need her to play well. Look at our officials tonight. We're ready for the opening tip. Louisville in the red, and we are underway as the Cardinals win it. Playing in their first championship since 09. Of course, old hat for Connecticut into the national championship game for the eighth time. And tipped out of play here just seconds into the championship. Well, Shoney Schimmel is their best offensive player, and not surprisingly, Kelly Ferris, one of the best defensive players in the country, will draw that assignment. Emmett from the corner, got it to go, and a nice start, a three-pointer. You know, Connecticut has been behind only by three points in the entire NCAA tournament, their biggest deficit. Well, obviously, making shots will give a team a lot of confidence. We're tied up. Possession arrow. We'll keep it on this end. It is imperative that Jeff Walls' team get off to a good start. 
It was not much of a contest the first time these two teams met in Big East Conference play earlier this year. 72-58 the final. And in fact, it's 12 consecutive wins for Connecticut over Louisville. But Louisville forces the turnover. Here's Shoney Schimmel. He takes a lot of threes, 283 of them this season. Hammond with a little fall away and around and out. UConn beating Notre Dame surprisingly easily in a national semifinal, 83 to 65. Now for Jeff Walls, his team has beaten four straight top two seeds. And one of the things, of, wow, how about that shot from distance? Way downtown from Esqueda Lewis. The rebound comes out high to Dolce. She knocks it down. And one of the things you want to watch, obviously, with Louisville is can they continue to play in the moment and not let the weight of the moment affect their ability to play tonight? Can they continue to rain three-pointers? They're hitting 45% in their last four NCAA games. Smith jumping into the lane. That jumper will be short by Vales, and it's... Free to Stephanie Dolson, who's playing in some pain, of course. He documented this during the semifinal. Stress fracture in her right ankle. That one will go down by Mosqueda Lewis, the best three-point shooter in America. She is dangerous. She has become a complete, polished offensive player, but that remains one of her best skills. She can shoot it with unlimited range. So Connecticut jumps into a 5-3 lead. Fails on a high post. Antonita Slaughter, of course, has been the scoring story. She gets her first three-pointer from the wing, and that rattles out, and the tip won't go. She could not be shooting threes better than she is coming into the championship game. Here's Ferris left open from the wing. That would have been a three-pointer. Rhea Smith, the 5'10 sophomore. Gives it off here for Bales, and she lays it up and in. A well-run break. Well, you've seen Bogan transition in that instance, and in a half-court set, Bria Smith do what she does best. That is get by people and make plays for herself or her teammates. Let's get a loose. Driving it, a little teardrop. One-hander won't fall. Now, Shoney Schimmel does something like that, a pass that is a bit on the showy side in every single game. And that play she made with her sister, Jude, the other night, the around-the-back pass in transition was amazing. It gives her team juice. And listen, she's a high-risk, high-reward passer at times, but I like it. Nice steal. Dolson picked up by Smith, who knocks it free, and it comes to Caroline Doty. So UConn a little bit fortunate. Here's Brianna Stewart, who's been so sensational in this tournament. 29 points for the freshman in the national semifinal. One of the things you'll watch with Jeff Walls, we call him a mad scientist. He did not put his game plan in for tonight's game until yesterday, or this morning, a shoot-around, and he said, listen, we need to take away Kalina Mosqueda-Lewis and Brianna Stewart and make other players from UConn beat us. Tony Schimmel committed that foul. Tipped away, but Doty, who has survived three ACLs, gets it off to Ferris. Shot clock at 14. Ferris with a very tough angle on that, but Stewart collects it and lays it in. And now an official timeout. And Smith is a little bit shaken up here with 16-29 to go in the opening half. UConn with a two-point lead in the national championship. Connecticut with a two-point advantage, and Doris, the officials are over at the monitor taking a look at the elbow by Doty. Correct. Remember, this has been a point of emphasis for a couple of years in both men's and women's college basketball. Contact above the shoulder, swinging the elbow, and clearly Caroline Doty does that and makes contact. And Smith went down hard there. We'll take another look from another angle here. A flagrant one, the foul deemed excessive in nature. Illegal contact with an elbow above the opponent's shoulders, not swung excessively. Penalty on that is two shots of the ball. A flagrant two is one involving contact not only excessive, but severe or extreme. I think it's going to be a flagrant one. And of course, the penalty on a flagrant two is a player ejection and two shots and the ball. Now, Jeff Walls made the request for them to go over to the monitor and take a look at this. Well, the officials clearly did not see the contact above the elbow, and he has this ability to make sure they're paying attention to it. And obviously, when Bria Smith hit the deck and stayed down, of course he's going to make that request. 
Now they can take a time out, a timeout away from him here. 16-29 to go in the first half. Let's see what they elect to do. So this is at Coach Wall's request. And Smith definitely went down. How much contact, if any, there was. That's the thing they're trying to pick up here. So they are going to call it a flagrant one. It it's will right, be well, a flagrant. Yeah, there's yep. no doubt about it. It was not excessive because Caroline Doty was simply trying to make a basketball play and create a little separation from her and her defender. So flagrant one foul, two shots and the ball for the Louisville Cardinals. Pretty good foul shooting team at 70 percent. UConn's been off the chart shooting them in the tournament at 87 percent. And they're going to bring Anthony to slaughter their best foul shooter to the line for two. She hits 86 percent. So it'll be a foul on Caroline Doty. Caroline is not typically in the game very long. She is a fifth year senior. She's been starting more of a symbolic maybe calming role than anything else. She's quickly quickly out anyway in a few minutes. So many injuries. How about the OP dope by Anthony to slaughter trying to step up and shoot those free throws. Smith going to the line here. Wall so slaughter to go to the line. She couldn't suppress that grin. So instead it's Bria Smith shooting it. She was the one that got fouled. So a terrific start by Louisville. This is a team that's entirely different from the one that faced Connecticut earlier in the year. They're playing so confidently, so loose, so free. And I think it started with the Baylor game. He, he told his players, go ahead and shoot 43s. That lifts any kind of reservations you have about taking shots. And a nice entry pass to get Sarah Hammond to look inside. Hammond draws the foul. She'll go to the line here. The personal on Today Kelly the Ferris, her first. Hammond is one who has to stay out of foul trouble herself which has been a career long problem for her. She was not only recruited by Connecticut. At the line and drops in the first one. She made the long trip bringing her parents to campus just so they could figure out how long the drive was. Yeah, her parents wouldn't let her fly to Storrs, Connecticut. They decided to say, OK, if you want to go, it's a long way for us to come and see every game. Out of Mount Vernon, Kentucky, eventually deciding on Louisville over UConn. And already we've seen multiple defenses. This one, an extended half-court trap, just making UConn a little bit of passive pressure to make them use some clock. Hartley straight on, but too long. Louisville up by two. Smith with a kick out and a whistle. A shove in the lane with 15.53 to go. And the Louisville Cardinals, what an amazing run it has been. And they have to love their start tonight. I want to win the championship for this team just to prove everyone wrong. We do belong here and we've worked so hard to make it here. It takes an entire team to reach the pinnacle of success. You want to see a man having an awfully good week? Well, here he is. Rick Pitino made history himself last night as the Louisville men won the national title. They're attempting tonight to do it has been one time in the history of the game accomplished. 04, UConn made history. Men's and women's titles, Emeka Okafor. That was in 2004 and the same year, Diana Tarazi defeating Tennessee 70-61. Connecticut winning their third consecutive title and fifth overall. And that was on the strength of one of the greatest players and greatest winners in women's college There's basketball history and women's history in general, Diana Drossi. Inbound for Hammond and gets the easy two. Well, just excellent execution. And Jeff Walls is an outstanding tactician on both ends of the floor. He asks his players to do an awful lot of thinking defensively. They will switch defenses based on number of pass, which side of the floor their opponent goes to. Barris with the scoop in the lane. It won't roll in. Rebound up, and that's no good. Another scrap for it. Getting very physical. Hammond has to bounce it to a guard, and Shoney Schimmel. Slaughtered deep in the corner. He's had an amazing tournament. 
Here's Hammond again. Really feeling it when she's taking shots out there. You can see what Louisville wants to do. They'd like to get up and score as quickly as possible. Stewart high off the window and draws the foul. So she'll be at the line to shoot here with 15.05 left in the half. Connecticut is one of the toughest defenses to score against in the country. Jeff Wallace said a couple things. We've got to make some threes, no question about it. We've got to get into transition, space the floor as much as possible. Slaughter picks up the foul as Stewart knocks down the first one. Monique Reed will check back in, a senior from Louisville. And another one coming for Stewart, who makes 78%. She has had some run in the NCAA tournament. She's averaging 20 points a game in the tournament, shooting 55%. But it's Louisville on top, 11-8. Smith had a very difficult semifinal with a lot of turnovers. She turned it over eight times on the rebound, up and in by Reed, just into the game. Well, you can see they are going to a ball screen, and that means Stephanie Dolson is being asked to guard in that situation. And with those injuries, it is impossible. And Bria Smith is attacking her once they get that exchange. Dolson swings here for Jefferson just in, and she's off target. They'll get a second life. Morgan Tuck tries to reverse and lays it in. She's played some big minutes for them. I'll tell you what, her nickname should be CC, cool customer, because she doesn't play like a freshman. Louisville in their second final in school history. UConn turns them over. They beat them the first time. Jefferson lost the handle, got it underneath. Tuck had it blocked by Hammond from behind. And here's Shoney Schimmel. UConn right now playing with three freshmen at the same time. Smith draws the foul. Dolson got her. What do you notice? A couple things here. Louisville is keeping the floor spaced. And Gina Oriema's team did such an exceptional job against two of the most dynamic guards in the country in the national semifinal. Skylar Diggins and Kayla McBride were not allowed to get into space and operate and take advantage of great one-on-one -on -one skills. The spacing for Louisville Dave O'Brien has been exceptional, and this young woman is capable of taking advantage. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, Bria Smith got some exciting texts last night. Peyton Siva texted her about 4 o'clock this morning after they celebrated their championship and said, get one more. Russ Smith is a friend of hers as well. They grew up together in New York City, and he texted her, go get it. There's been a lot of support back and forth. I talked to Peyton and Russ today on the phone, and they said, we told them when it's hard, keep your head down and dig in. They were down by 12 last night. They want their women to have that same resilience tonight. The women had to overcome a 10-point halftime deficit to California. And that's after operating in prosperity in the regional semis and finals. They had huge leads on both Baylor and Tennessee. Both of the Schimmels now on the floor at the same time for Louisville. Jude Schimmel, a sophomore, the younger sister, on the floor as well. A lot of pushing and shoving and a foul here. That was with eight on the shot clock. Foul will go against Sarah Hammond, her first. And Stewart goes to the bench for Gina Oriema. Hartley picked up the dribble. Barris, the senior, into Dolson and knocked away. She's finding it very tough to maneuver close to the rim. Well, they are switching defenses. That's a 2-3, but their communication in it is excellent. Dolson with a spin. Got a good look. No. Barris kicks it out. Here's Tuck with a three. And once again, it's Louisville with the basketball. And here's Schimmel. Look at that handle. Straight on for a three, but not there. She is so exciting to watch in the open floor. Bria Hartley, the pull-up 16-footer, and she knocks it down. When Bria Hartley is confident, that is the shot she goes to over and over. Walls calling out a, pray, a play. Jeff Walls has overcome a very serious childhood stuttering problem to become one of the... I'd have to say more gregarious college basketball coach. is a big steal here for Hartley, and he'll, she'll lay that in on the other end. And tie it at 14. We talked about the difference in Brianna Stewart's confidence level. That is another player right there, Bria Hartley, who has had her struggles, but is at her best point in this season. Shoney Schimmel with a long one and missed badly there, but it came right to Hammond. Could not finish that. Tapped three times and controlled by Mosqueda Lewis. 
Tied at 14. The leaner, Muscanalus draws the foul and she'll go to the line. And and one for the talented sophomore. Uh, Connecticut has so many options on the offensive end. Five different positions can score regardless of who is on the floor. In this particular instance, it's the best shooter in the country showing she, she can do just a little bit more than that. Back in Orange, 11.58 to go here in the first half. A tight one. Connecticut with a two-point lead. We were talking about Jeff Walls in his sixth year as the head coach. Well, you were touching on this just prior to the Bria Hartley steal. Sort of had to turn our attention away. But the stuttering problem he overcame. And he told us a story about, and everybody can remember this. You're in elementary school. All of your classmates are sitting around in a circle, Dave O'Brien, and you're reading out loud. And everybody gets one paragraph. And he said he would sit there because of that stuttering problem and be counting out the number of paragraphs, absolutely terrified uh, that he was not going to be able to get the words out. He was riveting. And when you look at his six-year record relative to Gino Oriano's, it's very comparable. That is a young, handsome, well-spoken, charismatic guy who can flat-out coach. Uh, so if he can get the recruiting ball rolling, you better look out. A 7 0 run here for UConn, as you see over the last minute plus. Smith trying to take that baseline. Seal off by Dolson. She's on the line. Stephanie Dolson came over. That's four turnovers. But you look at them over the first six years, it's a fascinating comparison. Awfully close. And remember, this is a, a Louisville program that will be headed to the ACC. Hardly for Ferris in the corner. Kelly playing in her last game in a UConn uniform. Stewart got it up there, hit it, and in the act of shooting a three, she'll go to the line. It's been that kind of tournament for that kid. For the last two weeks, as we've watched Connecticut practice, all of their sets, the ball wanted to find this young woman. It's amazing when you get the most talented or one of the most talented players on the floor who's on a roll, how that ball finds him. Monique Reed committing to personal six for Stewart. She's missed a couple of foul shots, so she'd be having an even better first half. Connecticut by six. This is their biggest lead. And remember, this is a Connecticut team that can spurt you right out of the game. They have got to keep putting points on the board. Jeff Walsh said it. They've got to score at least 75 to 80 for one of the best offensive opponents they'll face all year. Smith. 17 points in the semifinal against Cal. Shot clock down to two. Smith fires a long three. A scrap for the rebound in the corner, and UConn comes away with it. So right now, all the momentum belongs to the Huskies. Trying for their 35th win of the season. They have never lost. Gino Oriema, perfect 7-0 in national championship games. Stewart, catch and shot, got it all net, a two-pointer. And right now, Jeff Walls is telling his kids, we gotta find a way to stop her, or she's gonna get 29 in the title game. She is cooking 22-14. Connecticut understands who is playing the best basketball. So you run sets designed to get Brianna Stewart a touch. Yesterday at practice, they went about three or four minutes. They were up and down the floor. And Gino stopped the practice and said, seven straight offensive series for the team in white, and it never found Brianna Stewart. He said, that will not happen tomorrow night. Most points by a freshman in a championship game. This is since 2000. She's at 89 right now. Look at the name at the very top of that list, Maya Moore. She right now is averaging what you said, 20 points per game. That would be a freshman record for the UConn Huskies. And that's a program that has generated some of the biggest stars in the history of women's college basketball. Hard not to notice it was Brittany Griner at the bottom of that list. 10-25 left in the first half. Now Louisville throughout the tournament has been able to answer time and time again. Shona Schimmel really airmailing that shot. Is Ferris in transition. Backdoor cut, Muscada Lewis, but it's not there. Dolson fighting for the rebound. She draws the foul. 
Tough to take it away from Stephanie Dolson, named an All-American by the Women's Basketball Coaches Association. Jude Schimmel with her second personal. And here's Hartley to set it up. Farris. Stewart really commanding the ball too, something she wasn't doing very much early in the season. She gets another entry. Well, you're exactly right. Excellent patience. patience. The ball moves side to side. That allows the duck in by Brianna Stewart. Already the versatility of her game on display. She can stretch it to the three-point line. She can post up. She can go off the dribble. There's not a thing on the offensive end Brianna Stewart can't do. Shoni Schimmel on the drive. No. Harassed every time she gets close. And here comes Connecticut again, building on a 10-point lead. Hartley on the penetration. She's bumped and fouled on that play with 9.21 left. Now watch Brianna Stewart. She is an incredibly long player. She's just working for interior position. The backside of that zone with Shoni Schimmel there, that is a mismatch. So you can create mismatches in its zone just as easily as you can in a man. And you talked about it. Sarah Hammond couldn't afford foul trouble. Jeff Walls' team is not... Uh, at full strength. You think over the course of this season, you lose Shanta Dyer, Tia Gibbs, Asia Taylor. Uh, it, it would have been nice to see these two teams square off against one another if he were fully healthy. Jude Schimmel will sit now with three personal fouls. So she's in deep trouble. And quite emotional at the moment as Hartley makes that one. Louisville scoreless since the 1444 mark. Slaughter has not been able to get on track. Neither has Shoney Schimmel. Look at the defensive pressure by Hartley into the backcourt. Shot clock is down to nine. She just got it across half court. Smith trying to slice in. Denied a clean defensive stop. Hartley with a spin. Shoney Schimmel went down. Hartley with a kick. Muscato Lewis nails the three. 29-14 and another timeout. And right now that's the only way Louisville can stop UConn. It's with timeouts. It's the patented Connecticut spurt. Uh, this team is one of the toughest to score against. They push up into pressure. They get exactly what you want. You're askew and they're on fire. For her that feels like all day to shoot it. And UConn fans know she needs absolutely no opening. Such a quick release. So 29-14, Louisville, all for their last 12 against Connecticut. As far as wins and losses, 12 consecutive defeats. And the first time they played him, the only time they played him in January, Brianna Stewart didn't even play in that game. We're collecting the best photos around the women's tournament from athletes and fans. Go to ESPNW.com slash tourney photos for more of the best athlete social photos throughout the tournament. Uh, Louisville trying to get one of their star shooters to put it in the bucket. Slaughter trying to take command and banks it in off the window. That's a, a terrific move by a terrific player. But if you're going to rely on that kind of individual effort all night, that is a tough road to hope. Smith nearly stole it away. Approaching eight minutes to go in the first half. UConn has been impressive. Farris from the corner. Around and out. Shoney Schimmel down the open floor. Dynas picks it up top here. Slaughter again through the lane. They're expecting her to back out and shoot threes. She's carving them up in the lane. Well, just excellent recognition. Well, UConn is putting so much pressure on that makes an individual play and gets in a little bit of space. Over the top. Stewart again. They leave Ferris wide open once more, and she'll nail the three. That's the difference for Kelly Ferris this year as opposed to past years. She does not hesitate to take shots. Hammond in the lane. Nicely done with the left hand. But you're talking about Kelly Ferris. All she has done is win four consecutive high school championships in Indiana. And she's been in four Final Fours 
at Connecticut. So that's eight final fours tipped in by Stewart. Wow. Let's tell you, Stewart is an unbelievable athlete. I would love to have seen how close to the rim her fingers were on that tip in. Joni Schimmel. Stewart with the rebound. Well, UConn playing with great energy, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Smith absorbing that shot. She went down. So under seven to go in the half, and it's UConn by 14. Well, back in New Orleans in the national championship game, and UConn up by 14. Holly Rose standing by with Jeff Walls. Well, Coach Walls, you got off to such a strong start, but then UConn goes on a 19-0 run. What was going wrong there? Well, we just rushed a lot. I mean, we, we got some things going well. We got some really nice shots starting off the game, and then all of a sudden we just started to panic a little bit. We started dribbling the ball, and then they started executing, too. They made some big shots. We have to figure out a way to get them out of the paint. I mean, they're spending a lot of time in there, and it's really hurting us. So we got to get them out. They're scoring a lot off of second chance points, and we knew that that was something we had to limit. So we're going to have to do a much better job of that. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Okay, Holly, thank you very much. The score went from 14 10 Louisville on a 19 0 run, and it was 29 14. Let's remember this is a Connecticut team that forces 19 turnovers, and they make almost 11 steals per game. And I think you think back over the seven national championships in Connecticut's history, you generally associate them as the best offensive team in the country, and rightly so. But the reality is Connecticut is one of the staunchest, toughest defenses to score against. And the reason Louisville is sped up is because Connecticut is applying tremendous pressure. It has been ferocious, and it's been all over the floor. Louisville with the basketball, trailing 34 to 20. Smith looking for that baseline and the kick up, but on the line and turns it over. Five turnovers for the Cardinals. First, they made an astonishing 16 three pointers in that epic upset of number one Baylor in a regional semifinal. They've made one in this first half. Ryan Jefferson. Muscata Lewis is a whistle foul that was away from the basketball and a foul will go against Mariah Jefferson. Well watch Brianna Stewart you're going to see a young freshman do something very few women do watch how far up she is and how close to the rim those fingertips are. She has the wingspan of a player seven foot one and to be honest with you Dave. She hasn't even figured it all out yet. She is just scratching the surface and look at her numbers already. 12 points, four rebounds, took a shot on the shoulder in the national semifinal. It does not seem to be affecting her very much. I'm not sure if she's feeling any pain at all the way she's playing. There's a strained ligament. Hammond up top. There's a little Shelby Harper into the game. Ball of 5 4 officially. Uh, certainly not afraid to shoot it, but tipped out here by UConn. Caroline Doty will come back in now and Jefferson will take a seat. Caroline seemingly has been in this program for 15 years. <laughs> Even she joked about how long she's been here. Teammates think of her as a 35 year old. She's been through so many injuries. Harper up top. Doty picks her up. She gave up the dribble there. Hammond was hot early, but she has certainly cooled down. And tipped out of play by Ferris with 12 on the shot clock. And the Schimmel sisters, scoreless so far in the national championship. And Jude on that bench with three fouls. Well, how many times have we seen Connecticut in their history take away your best option to score? Not only take you away, but even if you get shots, you shoot a significantly lower percentage than you're accustomed to. You've got to be able to play through frustration if you're a star opponent of Gino, Gino Arama, because he's going to make you win in ways you're not comfortable winning. Louisville's got to get a shot in the air. Shot clock at four. Hammond. There's Stewart again to deny her two on the shot clock. Just two seconds to shoot now. Stewart had four blocks against Notre Dame in the semifinal. So she did everything for Connecticut. 
Got to get it up quickly. Hammond's able to beat the shot clock buzzer, but did not make the shot. UConn looking to build on a 14 point advantage. Elena Mosqueda Lewis. She's an All American as well. Stood down the lane off the window. That won't drop. And knocked out of play with 5.15 to go. It'll stay on this end. I think Stewart was stunned she didn't get a foul call. And I think back to December 2nd when they play Maryland and then Penn State back to back. That's when things went wrong for, for Brianna Stewart. Mosqueda Lewis with an open look and a three pointer off the nice hustle by Brianna Stewart to keep it alive. Yeah, exactly. And Brianna Stewart faces Maryland Penn State. They, they are so physical with her that she gets in her head that she can't compete at this level. So it takes her about a month and a half to get out of that funk. Well, guess what? She's out of it. Now on the other end, clamp down defense again. UConn harassing Louisville every time they touch it. And a 17-point advantage. The steal by Slaughter. Fourth time UConn has turned it over in the opening half. Slaughter so quiet after a very noisy tournament to this point and that's a held ball the possession arrow will keep it here with 427 to go wow that's a quick whistle on a held ball I thought that was just a great block shot by Brianna Stewart exactly what Gino said no question so Shoney Schimmel to put it in most outstanding player of the Oklahoma City Regional they can't, the whistle can't change because of the, the disparity in score. Slaughter buries a long distance three. Well, it only hit two of those in the opening half, but this one cuts it back to 14. Tuck, good look. Not there. Stewart down the lane. Two more. She came out of nowhere to spare that rebound. Six foot four with tremendous athleticism and great instincts. The difference, she's playing with tremendous confidence now. That has not been the case all year long. Certainly the ability there. Hammond can't get it to go. Both Smith and Mosqueda Lewis went out of play on the other end. They are now getting into the frame. Ferris trying to feed underneath. It's tucked for two more. And UConn is carving up Louisville. They're just getting anything they want at this point. If they don't score off the initial shot they take, they're doing an excellent job on the offensive glass. That's been a tough night for Jude Schimmel. So 3.15 before halftime. And perhaps it can't come soon enough for the five seed Louisville Cardinals. Here's Doty. No one came out to guard her. Shoni Schimmel. She has been totally shut down by the Huskies so far tonight. 0 for 6 and finally knocks one in. Had been scoreless to that point. Now she's very capable of having a monster second half. No question about it. She scores in bunches in a variety of ways, off the dribble drive or from distance. Stewart blocked by Hammond. Nice clean play there by Sarah Hammond. You know, when Brianna Stewart started the struggle in December and it continued into January, Gina Oriana said she's going to have to figure it out. I've got games to win. Well, Stewie, you've got it figured out, young woman. Six foot four, unbelievable athleticism. Dad Ryan, yes, that's my daughter. That's pretty good. Welcome back to New Orleans, where Connecticut leads Louisville 41 to 25 all game. We've been talking about the transformation of Brianna Stewart. How do you know a confident player? It's one who seeks shots. Against Louisville's 2-3 zone defense, Brianna starts to go away. She sees a little space, comes back to take the shot. Doris, this is a kid. Earlier in the season, she shied away from that. Now, demanding the basketball. You know, she's done such a good job moving without the basketball, but you're right. You have to want to be in this moment, and clearly she is ready for it. 14 for her. As we showed you, the most by a freshman since 2000 in the NCAA tournament. 
Five on the shot clock. Ferris gets a good look and drains that one, a three-pointer. So not only are they dominating in the paint, they're dominating outside. Well, they'll set a record for threes made per game and threes attempted in Connecticut history. In fact, they, they, they'll, they win tonight. They will shoot fewer free throws than any of their national championship teams have. That's a traveling violation on Slaughter, so no basket. And to neither Slaughter as frustrated as any of the Cardinals so far. Connecticut, meanwhile, six out of 14 from beyond the three-point line. Now Gino Oriema talked before the tournament started about his team coming together. This was the best he saw them. Here's Stewart again. Got it. Three-pointer. She can't miss. That kid is absolutely on fire. What a tournament. And when she was struggling, it was because she was putting so much pressure on herself. She came to Connecticut as Doty gets another strip here. She comes to Connecticut. You know what I'm saying? She could be the best ever. Well, she's playing like it. Guess who's open? Draws the foul. She beat everyone to the other end. Well, her last two, but again, she's seeking opportunities. She spaces to the weak side of the floor, gets right in her shooting motion pretty quickly. And remember, you, you know, I know she struggled, but there, this is a young woman who's standing at the free throw line who's been on multiple USA basketball teams. She has been in big games before. One for four at the line, and she has 17 points. And that's the most points by a UConn freshman in a championship game. The 18 that she has right now and still about 90 seconds before the half. Man. You talk about taking advantage of the big stage. She has done that. Brianna Stewart. Shoney Schimmel gets the shot in the air short. Rebound tipped and controlled by Stewart. So coming up on one minute and a dominating effort by Connecticut in the opening 20 in every phase. Stewart again looks for that shot once more and it's off target. Slaughter hoping for a little bit of life here and a foul. As Bria Stewart went hard, she'll go to the line to shoot two. And coming up on the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report, Maya Moore live on set. Well, she was a dynamite freshman in her own right. And a first half breakdown all coming up at halftime. The foul here will go against Stokes. It'll be number one. Smith, 64% at the line, rattles in the first one. Sean Bales coming back on 6-4 junior not a big scorer and the Cardinals need scoring so five points for Bria Smith there is Maya Moore and that young woman was the epitome of a student athlete Stewart battling for it shoved aside there was no foul there she may have been shoved right onto the baseline by Bales Slaughter, nice dish for Hammond, lays it in. Good job by Slaughter using the dribble. We, we're accustomed to seeing her stand on the three-point line of space to make long-distance jumpers. And Gina Oriama going to use a timeout here. With 16 and a half to go in the opening half, 48-29. Ladies and gentlemen, please Brianna Stewart has been a highlight package throughout the tournament and again in the national title game. Well, she's talented, and once she stopped battling herself, all of her skill set came to bear. Here she gets fouled on the three-pointer. She gets it squared so quickly. This time she recognizes a mismatch, gets the duck in. And what can you do with a seven-foot, one-inch wingspan? Well, you could be a pretty good shot blocker. The mid-range game, yeah, that's there. Offensive board it, go ahead. Seven of 11 with six boards already for Brianna Stewart. Did not even play against Louisville when they squared off back in January because of an injury problem. Louisville wishes that script had followed suit. But she has been tearing them up inside and outside. 18 points, also seven rebounds for Stewart. Oh, by the way, a very good passer. Shot blocker. 
Caroline Doty here. Chance for one more shot for Connecticut. Alina Muscato Lewis. Doty. Back to Muscato Lewis. Blocked out of the sky by Smith. Got it back and fired. Barely nicking that rim. And that'll do it. Halftime of the national championship game. And Connecticut is rolling ahead 48 to 29. Let's go to Rebecca Lobo here. Shoni, you are down 10 to Cal in the semifinal game. What do you need to do personally and as a team to overcome another double-digit deficit? I mean, just as a team, we got to come together as a collective team and go out there and defense. I mean, defense is going to win this game, and we just got to go out there and rebound. I mean, that's our main thing, and then our offense will come after we get our defense going. All right, thank you. Holly? I'm with Brianna Stewart. Brianna, you didn't play in the last meeting against Louisville. What did you figure out that you can do so effectively here? I think just really keep moving. I mean, going inside and outside, that's just hard to guard in general. And if I keep doing that, I think Louisville's going to have a tough time guarding it. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, Holly, Rebecca, thank you very much. Connecticut heading for their locker room here at New Orleans Arena and feeling awfully good about an eighth national championship because they have Brianna Stewart. 48-29 at half as we go to Kevin Agandi for the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. Here with Carol Lawson and Carolyn Peck, it was 14-10 Louisville. And then Brianna Stewart decided to take over. Seven points in a 19-0 run, Carolyn. She did everything but dunk. She can dunk, but she did practically everything for the offense. She just about did dunk on that offensive putback. She was up around the rim. Brianna Stewart looks as comfortable as a broken-in pair of shoes in this national finals. She is calling for the basketball, and she knows what she's going to do with it before it comes to her. This freshman is playing with a lot of confidence. Doris Burke referred to, she is aggressive and seeking the basketball. And the rest of the Huskies are trying to find her. They're getting to her. She's got the hot hand. She's got the confidence. She's got to keep rolling with it. 18 points already in this game for Brianna Stewart. She is the star offensively for UConn. For Louisville, their star, Shoni Schimmel, just two points. And she had to wait 17 minutes to get that bucket. That UConn defense is, is swarming. And they're everywhere. They're protecting the paint. They're locked in on Shoni Schimmel, not allowing her to get free looks at the basket. They're making other players be playmakers, create off the dribble. And it's not what they're accustomed to. Brianna Stewart had all the Showtime highlights in the first half, but this is why the Huskies are winning. It's because of their defense, and it has just taken the air out of the Louisville offense. We talked about how loose Louisville was, how free and easy they were playing. Nothing has been free. Nothing has been easy in the first half. UConn has made them work for everything. A pass, a dribble, shots, rush shots, and the three-point attack that we talked about, that was the reason what carried them through the tournament. They're struggling from beyond the arc they as well. They hit 16 threes against Baylor, tying a women's tournament record, and you see a lot of red here, guys. 10 of 30 from the floor, just 2 of 9 from the three-point line. Can they get back in this game? It's going to be tough. I mean, the deficit is so large, and it's not like UConn's defense isn't playing as well as it's played all season long. I think this is too big of a deficit. Louisville's going to have to hit a barrage of threes in the second half to it, cut in. It's going to be the three-point shot that would have to pull them back into this ball game, and they're also going to have to find a way to stop the two main players that Jeff Wall said he wanted to stop, and that was Stewart and Mosqueda Lewis. They haven't done a good job of that yet. Stewart already passed Maya Moore tonight for the most points by a freshman in the tournament since 2000. Oh, by the way, guess who's here waiting on the side? Maya Moore, one of the best players in, of course, the W. NBA, she will join us as we continue here at the half. Brianna Stewart, 18 points, the lead at 19 for UConn. Kevin Agani here with Carol Lawson and Carolyn Peck. About 10 minutes ago, we heard a loud round of applause. I thought it was just because of us. <laughs> no. Maya Moore joins us here, one of the best players in the country. We do appreciate you taking the time to join us. And what do you think of this performance, the first 20 minutes from UConn? They had a, a little bit of a rough start. I thought it was slow, you know, maybe some jitters, the, the finals. But, boy, did they turn it on after that second media timeout. Uh, Brianna Stewart has been unbelievable. And the way they've been just playing with confidence is really fun to watch. It's amazing when you turn the brain off and you just play. And we're seeing that from Brianna Stewart. 19-0 run. She scores seven points. Uh, speaking of points, you know a thing or two about putting it up <laughs> and scoring points. Through the years, you left the game, the college game, as the fourth leading scorer all time. In that time, we have seen a couple of players come in to the game. Brittany Griner bumping you down. Elena Deladon 
bumping you down. What do you think of that, their impact on the game, the college game the last couple of years? It's, it's, it's really just a pleasure to be able to, you know, have competed with and, and to watch those players really blossom and perfect their offensive game. Those two players that you just mentioned are so unique in the women's game and in basketball in general. And to see them just grow and watch Brittany get better and better in Atlanta just dominate this year was really fun. Maya, you watch Brianna Stewart, and this has kind of been a coming out party for her in the Final Four, but she certainly had her ups and downs, as a lot of UConn freshmen do. What is it about Gino Ariema in terms of allowing you to grow, but making sure that he's tight uh, with his discipline with you as you're early in your career? Well, now that I've graduated, I've been able to learn some of his <laughs> tactics. Uh, now, that I, now that I'm gone, I, uh, the light bulbs come on a little bit. But during the year, he pounds you. He pounds you. He pounds you. And, and if you're a great player like me, like Brianna, like some of the other greats, you're very hard on yourself as well. So you have his pressure. You have your pressure. And sometimes it just gets to you a little bit. But when the when the tournament starts, he kind of eases off and he starts to, you know, put even more confidence in his players. And that's when you hope that they spark. And that's what Brianna's doing. The UConn program has won seven national titles. And Gino has said to his team, you know, you get me there, and then I can get you the championship. How does he turn that on to get the most out of his players to secure the deal in the final game? Well, he's got so much experience, and that's something that I appreciate, and I know his players appreciate. You just trust him. You trust what he's teaching you. You trust where he's brought you. You trust your teammates and, and what uh, they've invested in the season, and by, by that time, you're the most confident team out there. And that's what it comes down to with the tournament is who's the most confident, who's going to play the most fearless. And, you know, with, with him and, and the assistant coaches and um, phenomenal freshmen like Brianna, it, it's just really fun to, to play well in the tournament. We have video here of showing you cutting down the nets. He did it in 2009, 2010. He's 20 minutes away, Gino Ariema, yeah. winning his eighth national title. Yeah. He's played it off a little bit, yeah. but he could tie Pat Summit in Tennessee for the most titles. What do you think this would mean to him? Honestly, I don't I don't really coaches won so many things and I really think that he's just happy that the players are playing well, that they're growing, that they're having uh, a spark at the right moment. I mean, obviously, it's going to bump him even higher than he already is. And, and of course, he's going to appreciate it. But that's the one thing about coaches is, is he's always thinking about other people and, and thinking about his team and, and how to help the game grow. So this is all of that will be accomplished if, if UConn wins today. Maya, we do appreciate the time. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Enjoy guys. the night. Right now, UConn in complete control, 20 minutes away. They have a 19-point lead. Queen of Mosqueda Lewis, one of the big stars for UConn. She has 12 points in 18 minutes, including three threes. Second half coming up. 20 minutes in the books, and UConn's offense clicking on all cylinders. Bria Hartley. 10 minutes of action, six points, UConn 20 minutes away from another title. Welcome back to New Orleans in the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Second half coming up, a lot of work to do for the Louisville Cardinals. UConn firing on all cylinders. It's been sweet music to Husky fans around the country. Look at the first half stats. Everything in Connecticut's favor and everything in Brianna Stewart's favor. What a half of the freshman, 18 points. She sets the freshman scoring record in the NCAA tournament. She does that in 20 minutes in the national championship game. A look at her shot chart. Well, one of the things Louisville talked about was taking her out of the middle of the floor. This is her shot chart over the semifinals and tonight, and clearly she is getting to what you call the pro alley, that key area from the lane line extended. And one of the ways they have done that, Dave, is Connecticut's offense has been really good. They've had great player movement, great ball movement, and great screening action. She's taken 11, 11 shots. Mm. A freshman for a game in February, that's a lot of shots. This is a national championship game. And just a month ago, an uncertain freshman who wasn't sure exactly how to affect the game, well, it's amazing the difference a confidence can make because she's at the top of her game. This is the player Gino Oria Emma told us was coming to UConn, who he thought could be the best ever in his program before all was said and done. She is living up to that. Now this was a ball game in the first half. In fact Louisville had a lead of 14 to 10 with 13 52 to go and they were in pretty good shape. That's when UConn went on that long run 19 to nothing over five minutes and just blitzed them. Now, I think if you're Jeff Walls you've said to your players listen let's let's just take this in four minute segments and try to win each four minute segment. Kalina Mosqueda Lewis also had a good half. She had a dozen and it was three for six beyond the three point line. Louisville made only two out of nine.
from outside that three point line. And of course that's been a big part of their success in this tournament hitting those Hartley with a line driver in and out. And Louisville begins the process of trying to cut down that lead. Can they get back in it? Hammond with a two hits it. You know she came into tonight's game with only six made threes on the year. But she looks confident and capable of making that shot. Dolson swings it. Another open shooter. Ferris got it. A three-pointer. Well, that's just exceptional. We talked about their offense. Exceptional screening. Uh, Kalina Mosqueda Lewis just screened that post player on the bottom side of that defense and allowed her teammates such a clean, uncontested look. Ferris having a good final as well. Shoni Schimmel drops in a three. They need a lot of those, and she's been so quiet tonight, only five points. UConn went under the ball screen, which is shocking against Shoni Schimmel because she'd prefer to pull the trigger. She's a better driver than in the past, but that's what she prefers to do. Shoni. Such a creative, freewheeling, fearless player, but the threes keep on coming. Well, two straight screens by Kalina Mosqueda Lewis. Kelly's mom and dad here from Indiana. They don't know anything other than a season ending in the final four for their daughter, be it high school or college. The bounce into the lane and a quick two there for Sharon Bales. 54-36. Stewart taking the baseline. Collects her own miss and missed that one too. It's probably been a couple of weeks since she missed two in a row. Shoney again. That one missed badly. And now Ferris. They're bringing numbers here. Three on two. She'll slice through. Can't connect. 17-41 to go to go the other way. Let's check in with Rebecca. Dave, I talked to Louisville coach Jeff Walls at the half and he asked him what he told his team and he said we have to just try to get back in the, in this in order to do that we're going to have to scramble we're going to have to pick up in full court it could get ugly but that's what we need to do is get out in the full court and he said you know Connecticut's not only shooting great their defense is so good they're making my kids play to their weaknesses Bills with a miss but Hammond has rebounded well in the game denied Ferris again hits the deck and now tie up the possession I'll make sure it's on this end how many times have we done a Connecticut game and we've said that Kelly Ferris hits the deck. Yeah, it's extraordinary the way she affects winning in such a quiet, understated way, Kelly Ferris. All the kid does is win, Dave. Ten points, six rebounds, four assists, two steals. Constantly takes the opponent's best score, sets screens. The dish again, they find Bales again for two more. She may be the target here in the second half because Connecticut won't be thinking about her. Not a Rolling in Dolson and she's fouled. Stephanie Dolson will go to the line. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, I caught up with Coach Oriema of Connecticut at the half, and he said, you know, I'm worried about Shoni Schimmel in the second half. I know her personality, and she's going to try to win this game single-handedly in the second half. He said it will be upon senior defender Kelly Ferris to pay attention to her. He said the problem, she throws up all kinds of shots, and some of them go in. He's worried about her hook shot, her creativity, and he thinks his senior defender can shut her down. Well, Slaughter with the foul. Dolson makes the first. Stephanie Dolson, a 6'5 junior. It could be a reality show onto herself with all of her personality. <laughs> She's been so much fun to be around. All of these Final Fours for Connecticut trying to win their eighth national championship. And just lost out of play by Bria Smith. They cannot afford that. Well, she's not a natural point guard. Let's remember the last 22, 23 games, they've asked her to move to that position to take some pressure off of Shoni Schimmel. There was so much weight and responsibility on Shoni's shoulders that they make Bria play the point guard, though she isn't one. Her turnover numbers at times reflect that. Let's get Lewis in the paint, knocked away. Good stay home defense there by Slaughter and company. Schimmel over the top. Bales has it knocked free, and here come the Huskies again. Rhea Hartley with the look away, leaves it up and in. That was a pretty play. I'll we'll tell you this, if you allow Connecticut to get out in transition, they're going to put 100 on you. 58-38. Smith thought about the three. 
Gave it right back to Stewart. They've turned it over 11 times tonight. So 16 minutes left in the national championship game. Connecticut sitting pretty here in New Orleans. Let's get a Lewis with a kick. Stewart gives it right back. Ferris a three. She got an excellent look. She's missed a few of those tonight. Schimmel around the back. Tremendous ball handler, but she gives it away. Here's Hartley in the open floor, and she'll knock it home. Biggest lead of the ball game here for Connecticut, and a timeout Louisville. And the Cardinals making a lot of mistakes here. And UConn capitalizing. Kelly Ferris at one point didn't want to shoot the basketball. She said, my idea of being unselfish didn't always get us where we needed to be. That means she has got to be a willing and able scorer. In the past, it was five on four. Kelly Ferris is 15 minutes and 36 seconds from a national title. Welcome back to New Orleans, where Connecticut leads Louisville by 22 points. Holly Rowe did the report talking about how concerned Coach Oriyama is with the play of Shoni Schimmel. Connecticut's defense has been focused on her all night. First, Kelly Ferris is on her. When she goes off the screen, Connecticut quickly switches. They know they need to stay with Schimmel no matter where she is on the floor. But the most telling thing, ball on the opposite side of the floor, the defender's head is not even turned, staring yeah, right at Schimmel. They know how important she is to Louisville's offense. Well, and her numbers reflect that, Rebecca. Jude and Shoney have combined two for 11. Shoney has taken 10 of those shots. and. Listen, you can switch one to four with the lineup uh, that Louisville has on the floor many times. Up top, Hammond cuts loose along with but it's not there. And UConn so quick into the offensive zone. They are relentless on the offensive attack. Yeah, they'd like to score in transition. That's the seventh rebound for Kelly Ferris. So 12 points, seven boards, and she is doing a terrific job defensively as well. And three pass knocked away from Mosqueda Lewis. Jude Schimmel lost that, but she's fouled on the play with 14.53 left in this contest. And Connecticut leading 60 38 over Louisville. Here in New Orleans, I'm with a gentleman who had a pretty good evening last night in Atlanta, Rick Patino. He told me he hasn't been to bed yet. And, Coach, you don't have your voice, so thanks for doing this interview. But what has the last 48 hours been like for you? Uh, it's been great. I, I wish we were a little bit closer here. I'm a big fan of, of, of our ladies. And uh, they're just running into a buzzsaw with Connecticut. Connecticut can't miss. And this is one of the best freshman lady basketball players I've witnessed. Brianna Stewart. Yeah. Um, Coach, I know that you were able to speak to the team in their pregame meal. What was your message that was important? You know, I just told them you, you've, you've had a great season. Don't think about the championship. Focus on beating Connecticut. And sometimes you focus on the prize and you lose the game. I know that you guys were down in your game last night. How could they be resilient right now in this moment? Well, the only problem is we're a pressing team. And pressing teams can come back. They're really not a pressing team. And... They're giving up a lot of threes right now. That's the difference in the game. Well, thanks for your time. And get that voice back and then get some sleep, Coach. I think sleep will help. Thank you. <laughs> you certainly earned that. Thank you, Holly. Appreciate that very much. Knocked away to Jude Schimmel, and here come the Cardinals. And straight uphill, obviously, done 60 to 38. Slaughter's three is off the back of the iron. And those are shots that they've been hitting throughout the tournament. They've not been hitting them tonight. Although they did in the opening seconds and at one point led 14 to 10. But they made just three out of 14 beyond the arc this evening. Hartley leaning in. That's going to be an offensive foul on Bria Hartley. And her fourth personal. A Thursday at 4.30 Eastern. It's the Frozen Four getting underway in Pittsburgh. Yale and UMass Lowell squaring off in the national semifinals in ESPN2. Follow every championship at NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Now Brianna Stewart so far has not scored in the second half. She has 18 in the game. Here's Reed from three. Got it. 
That is a young woman who has battled through injury because as a sophomore, she was an 18.9 rebound per game average and looked to be on the verge of just something really special in the Big East Conference. Mosqueda Lewis got tied up in a backdoor cut. Shoni Schimmel with a quick pass. Her sister Jude from the corner. Yes, a three and some life finally for the Cardinals. Well, as Coach Patino alluded to, Connecticut had made so many threes. They average over eight. He's going to use a timeout because back-to-back -back threes has him within 16, so he's going to just make sure his troops are refocused. And if you are Louisville, this can be a little like Baylor where you say take as many threes as you want. That gives your guys a chance to know, listen, I can shoot them. It's not going to matter, make or miss. So you let it fly quickly, back to back threes, one by Monique Reed, one by Jude Schimmel. And Coach Patino, who is one of the first guys to make use of that three point line. Yeah, I like what I see. Now the Cardinals certainly do not lack for inspiration. Obviously, the men's championship team, number one. The coaching staff has been teaching them all about Muhammad Ali, a Louisville native who shocked the world when he defeated Sonny Liston. They've also been showing them the ESPN 30 for 30 about NC State's 1983 championship run. The great show, Survive in Advance. They've had a tremendous run of their own, but will it end here tonight? Louisville in his own, you're just starting to wonder, when is the last time Brianna Stewart touched the ball? <laughs> and there she is now at 21. Another three. Stewie, as her teammates refer to her. I mean, obviously, your natural tendency is to relax when you have that kind of cushion. So a good time out by Gina Oriema. Dolson to get back in the game for Coach Oriema. Reed off to Hammond. Shot clock down to 10. She lets fly, and that one missed. And she went down. Tossed out of play, however. A sloppy, rare sloppy moment for Connecticut. Now, Brianna Stewart has had very few sloppy or poor moments. Just spaces to the three-point line. Again, you see the activity. One player on UConn goes to the ball. That draws the nearest defender, and then she just spaces out to an open area. Out of Syracuse, New York. And look at this. Connecticut, 10 three pointers made, one away from Stanford's record in 1990 in a championship game. Stewart went down as that one was knocked free. Well, it sure did look like a foul right there. It looked but like the, she was it, on the arm. Should have been some whistle. 12 02 left. She was the National High School Player of the Year, the most sought after player in America. Coach Oriana Landinger and saying at the time she would be maybe the best player ever to play at Connecticut. She is living up to that in the most important games of her young life. Thrown away, however. UConn turns it over with 11.50 to go. We're going to talk with Gina Oriama when we come back to New Orleans where UConn has a sizable lead in the second half. UConn in the national championship game, leading Louisville 63-44. Let's go to Holly Roll with Gina Oriema. Well, Coach, a few minutes ago, you gave your team kind of a recipe in the huddle to not allow a comeback. No threes, no second chance points, and no fouls. How are they doing so far on that? We're doing great down there. What I forgot to tell them is, pass the ball to my guys and stop throwing the ball away. It's unbelievable what we've just done in the last five minutes. I'm, I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless. That never happens. Coach, tell me how you can get Brianna Stewart even more touches down the stretch. She seems like she's in such a good uh, place. We can't get her touches because we don't have any. We can't run offense because we're throwing the ball to the other team. If we just come down right, and take our time and make three or four passes, she's going to get all the shots she wants. We, we just got to settle down. Jeez, oh, man. Thanks, Coach. Understanding he's up 19. Yeah. He's not down seven. Well, let's let's be real. You know, we have watched over the last several weeks uh, a lot of programs practice. There is a distinct difference when you step in the gym and the Connecticut Huskies take the practice floor. You know, they, every cut is done with precision. Every drill is done as hard as you can possibly go. There is a standard of excellence that he is uh, asking his players to meet. Chris Daly is associate head coach who has been there every step of the way as they've won seven national titles and he's engaging her right now and she's heard it all before. Uh, you know, they have basically said, 
we, we don't play to a score. We play to a standard. Well, they only turned it over six times in the first half. You can see why he's a little upset. Eight turnovers already in the second half. But they're completely dominating the game despite this flurry of turnovers in just the last few minutes. Shot clock down to eight and a theft by Ferris. Chris Daly will tell you, Dave, that Gino Oriema's uh, need for perfection is his greatest strength and at times his greatest weakness. But he never coaches to the clock unless you're talking about the last possession. Clock and score, as far as that goes. And this team has had a lot more go right, obviously, and it's a nice swing inside for a quick two. Well, Stephanie Dolson, we haven't called her name all that much tonight. She has six points, but they really haven't needed her so much as an offensive threat. Drew Chimmel will lay that one in for two. 65-46. Certainly Louisville can't be thinking about trading baskets here with Connecticut. With ten and a half to play in the national title game. And the Huskies that close to an eighth championship. Barris tears that one away, got it free. Shot clock is at eight. Jefferson penetrating, dishing. Here's Dolson for two. Well, pretty play, but I mean, I think some, they're letting some contact go on both sides. Uh, that I think you got to continue to blow the whistle when a foul is committed. Drew Schimmel nearly gave that one up and landed in Reed's hands. Here's Slaughter has been such a big star. Ferris with another steal. She is everywhere defensively. Kelly Ferris lays it in. This is a player who is averaging well over two steals per game. And gets another one there. Well, the last game of her Connecticut career, and she is going out in style. 12 points, seven rebounds, four assists, and now a steal, and make it her 14th point off this particular steal. We have said it. She has played in the Brittany Griner era, which means she hasn't won the National Defensive Player of the Year. She would if she were in any other era. Big East Defensive Player of the Year, over a thousand points. And the most improved player in the Big East this year. And it's interesting that she played for her father. And in AAU basketball, her father absolutely refused to keep a scorebook. He said kids can get a false sense of security when you uh, just value points. And so she has learned to value basically every other aspect uh, than points per game. Kelly in her fourth consecutive Final Four. And closing in on a national title, 69-46. So any time there has been even a hint of a comeback for Louisville, the Huskies have snuffed that out. Shoney Schimmel takes a little bump. That shot won't go. That's a shot she's made throughout this tournament. Here's Jefferson, the freshman, slings the pass to Mosqueda Lewis and drains the three. She has 15. Shoney in the lane for two. They love how hard they're playing. I mean, they are not quitting. Ferris breaking that pressure. Well, you heard Rick Pitino talk about they're not a pressing team. Unlike his men's team, they can press their way back into games. 72 48. Dolson. Let's get a Lewis. So open. I mean, you can't leave her open like that. She will hit that all day, and that is the record for three-pointers in a championship game. Reed trying to wriggle free. Can't connect. Olsen for the rebound. So now it becomes a question of just how many points Connecticut is going to score. You could see the reason Jeff Wallace came into the basketball game believing, as you see the championship 12 threes, believing his team was going to need to score at least 75 or 80. I mean, this, this team is so gifted offensively. You've got three, four double-digit scores already. Fast on the other end is Jude Schimmel. 3.77 GPA. She received a National Academic Award here on the court the other night. 
during the national semifinals and before going out Jeff Walsh said here let me give you a hug congratulatory hug and she said no 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 my, my hair's perfect leave it alone <laughs> she's a tremendous student she also said she was more nervous to make the walk yes. out to center court than she was for the national semifinal against Cal well they've had a great year and a marvelous run but Connecticut has overpowered them tonight and now lead by 27 Playoff position at stake for ESPN's NBA Wednesday doubleheader at 8 o'clock Eastern. The Celtics trying to stay afloat in the East. They will host the Nets. And at 10.30, the Nuggets looking to improve their playoff position. They host one of the top teams in the West in the Spurs. And you're heading for Boston. Well, we simply can't escape one another. You'll call the Red Sox. I'll be on the Seas game. Be just a couple of miles apart there. That's on NBA Wednesday coming up. Tomorrow night. So just under eight minutes remaining in the national championship game. That girl indeed is on fire. Brianna Stewart, 21 points. She was already the outstanding player in the Bridgeport Regional. Now in the final four, she's been tremendous as well. Maybe even better. Jefferson banks in two, and they're getting everything they want. 79 now and counting. Schimmel way way downtown and they're one and done now the talent for Connecticut is certainly rising but they are playing better now than they have played all season no there's no doubt Gino Ram at one point told us it was the worst coaching job he had done wow that is a hard foul Stephanie Dolson went down really really hard getting some help up We'll take another look at a nasty foul. Wow, that could be excessive. That could be a flagrant foul. I don't care what time of the game it is. I don't know that I would call that a legitimate basketball play. Well, the officials are going to make this a flagrant one. Take another look as Dolson really got hit. Well, Denise Brooks is your baseline official. It didn't look like she was initially going to make this call. She waited to confer. She's right there. And it was like she waited to confer. I thought it was obvious. I'm not sure what she was waiting yeah. for. Yeah. Uh, they never did go to the monitor. They eventually called it a flagrant one, which is two shots and the ball. That's a foul deemed excessive in nature. A flagrant two would be severe and extreme. So they did not rule across that line on Reed. Dolson will be at the line, 79% foul shooter, and she's coming back for her senior year as an All American. Let's check in with Rebecca. Well, guys, one simple message from Jeff Walsh to his team in that last huddle was keep playing hard. He said it probably about 10 or 15 times. Then he said, keep pushing. We are going to keep fighting. We are going to keep competing. There's 717 left. Have fun and continue to play hard. Well, I think this guy also uh, is someone who expects his teams to compete at all times, regardless of score. I know they're at a huge disadvantage here, but this is a this is a matter of pride in your program. A loss here tonight, and he's still looking for that first career win against Connecticut. He'll follow 0 10. Jefferson off the handoff and fouled as she goes down. And if you're an opponent in women's college basketball next year and you're looking at the returnees of the University of Connecticut, boy, you better watch out. I know Kelly Ferris is their defensive stopper and a huge part of what they've been able to do. But Brianna Stewart's just figuring it out. Gina Moriama told us last week in Bridgeport at that regional that he believes Stephanie Dolson will be even better next year. And he said a huge jump. Mariah Jefferson's going to be better. Rhea Hartley might remain healthy. Morgan Tuck is exceptional. And she's really come of age in this tournament. Tuck has. Brianna Banks was having her best season in a uniform until she got hurt. She's not a bad dancer either. Apparently. Slaughter in the lane. A little teardrop not there. And not a good night for her shooting the ball. Another foul with 6.52 to go. Catch the Frozen Four is second semifinal when St. Cloud State and Quinnipiac meet in Pittsburgh Thursday at 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. Follow every championship at NCAA.com. 
you lose Caroline Doty and Heather Buck. And Caroline Doty, it would have been nice to see that young woman's career play out had she been healthy. I said the same thing about Monique Reed. Uh, Doty was a true point guard with pass first skills, but an ability to make shots as Dolson gets a 15 foot jumper. Uh, but she might go into coaching, so Doty may not have seen the last of her basketball career. Not there for Shoni Schimmel. Nice save on the baseline by Smith, however. Rhea Smith in tight for two. Yeah, and she's, she'll get better at the point guard spot. I know I've talked about her uh, struggles at times with turnovers, but boy, a hard driver, difficult to handle when she gets ahead of steam. She's got to develop her perimeter jump shot, Rhea Smith. Good size at the point, too, at 5'10". So many reasons for Louisville to look at this season and be very, very proud of themselves. An incredible run to the NCAA championship. Hardly with a three, and they keep pouring on those threes. UConn has hit its last 10 shots in this game. The steal by Dolson. And they're not letting up. 87 to 52. Gina Orama made Bria Hartley pull that basketball out. He's going to use some clock here. The most points in a championship game is 97. They can certainly reach that. Hartley back up top for Tucker. Here's another three, and they finally miss one. Been an outstanding shooting night. It's been a great night all the way around for Connecticut. Laid up and in by Bales. Now approaching five minutes to go. And the Yukon Huskies, the number one seed, ranked number three overall in the poll, about to win their 35th game of the year and another national championship. It will be number eight. And that would tie Tennessee for the most all time and a great Pat Summit. John Wood, number 10, and he, don't you get the feeling that that's the one for Gino? Well, he, he said yesterday that the number eight did not matter to him. I'm not sure that's true. Uh, think about this. When he was on that incredible win streak, I think it was 90 straight, he was carrying a book of John Wooden's around. And I believe in my heart, you know, provided he stays for the contract extension he just signed, that there's 10, at least 10 national championships in his future. With so many of the disciplines of Coach Wooden, he has taken to heart and put into his program. You know, the, the discipline his team plays with, period. Although his kids still have fun. And John Wooden's players always said that. Here's Hartley off the fake. She fires. So another championship just four minutes away. For the Connecticut Huskies. And once again, they will ascend to the throne. Jude Schimmel off the front of the iron. It tipped out high to Slaughter. She'll shoot it. It's amazing to think that Gino Oriema at one point said he felt this was his worst coaching job because all the buttons that he would typically press and, and, and it would work. He's been pushing those buttons this year. He didn't feel like they were working as well. And he also said 70% of what he's done to get this program in its current position don't necessarily work with today's student athlete. But his bar is impossibly high as Dolson misfires. And Shoni Schimmel, who is a junior, so she's coming back next year. She's become a star in this NCAA tournament. Listen, Louisville is going to be a major factor in women's college basketball. They're going to return those three players who have been hurt. Obviously, they'll lose Monique Reed. But this team is going to be a big-time opponent. Slicing in a very easy two for Stewart. 23 points for Brianna Stewart. And under three now in the UConn faithful. And there are a lot of them here in New Orleans for an extended stay. It didn't pack for just one national semifinal. They, they packed to be here a while. And they have barely been enjoying the city. Keep working, Shoney! And a timeout. Timeout. Connecticut timeout. takes one here with 2.37 to go. And Gino's going to go to his bench. They'll bring in Heather Buck, the senior, among others. 2.37 to play. Gino Oriema shared with us some of his childhood memories. Well, growing up in Italy, 
We don't have a TV. We don't have a phone. We don't have heat, electricity, DVR. <laughs> we don't have any of that stuff. No car. I never saw money. I don't know. I didn't know what money was. All the clothes I had, my mother made them. If it wasn't running around in the backyard, we didn't eat it. And his mom is here tonight, Marcy. Gino's mother looking on and about to celebrate another national championship with her son. So before Gino Oriam arrived at Connecticut, 0 20 or 30 win seasons, no tournament appearances, and obviously. You can imagine no Final Fours and championships. I, I was a player at Providence when he first took over. And before his arrival, it was simply a win you chalked up. You were going to play Connecticut. They were the patsy of the Big East. On both the men's and women's side, I remember Rick Pitino saying when he took the Providence job, he thought that Connecticut was a sleeping giant. The giant has awoken. Ferris with a shot clock down to one, hits it. She has really had a fine last national championship game with 16. And she has been as aggressive offensively as we've ever seen her. She was relishing this last 40 minutes. Kelly Ferris is going to go out as she should, a national champion. Well, two minutes to go, and the Ferris family can begin big time celebration here in New Orleans. 91 56. Kelly Ferris has been just superb in the national championship game, hitting shots. She's played spectacular defense. Open three, she's made those. And usually across the board, She'll have a statistic in every single one of the important columns. Gina Oriama, as she comes off the floor, how about this for an embrace between coach and player? And he said, there is no better representative of all of the things we value than Kelly Ferris. And that's what that hug and moment was about. 16 points, six assists, nine rebounds, and two steals for Kelly Ferris tonight in her swan song at Connecticut. You know, in a, in a day and age of social media and self-promotion and reality TV shows, <laughs> Kelly Ferris conducts her business with a humility and commitment to team uh, that most coaches should show to the people they coach. Understand what's important. It's not about the me, it's about the we. And that's what Kelly Ferris is about. Great teams in sports have a Kelly Ferris everyone's got one it seems if you get to this level where you are the king of the hill where you are number one you've got that player who does a little bit of everything and never wants to take any of the credit correct and you need one of those but you also need some big time stars and Connecticut's program uh, does not allow for selfishness but it does allow for superstars here's Heather Buck the senior to lay it in she's from Stonington Connecticut and in a championship game she gets a bucket and her teammates react as if she's hit a three-pointer at the buzzer Dolson up and off her feet and waving her hands that's a wonderful moment Dinas that one barely nicking the iron but up and in for Hammond so how about this in the final year of the Big East Conference as most people understand the Big East Conference to be they will win both the men's and women's championship indeed and I know Dave Gavitt has passed away but somewhere you got to believe there's a Manhattan in his hand a smile on his face he's commanding the room and Dave Gavitt coach if your conference had to go away this was the way to do it indeed Turns out Dave Gavitt had even more pull than we thought. Yeah. <laughs> and he had a lot. 40 seconds to go. 93 to 60. And Connecticut half a minute away from another national championship. But this one gets them even more history. It will tie Pat Summit and Tennessee for the most all time. And this will go down as the largest margin of victory in a championship game 
It's great number eight for UConn. The Huskies have won a record tying eighth national championship. Connecticut brings the title back to stores in 2013. And Doris Burke, this is what you call total victory. This is the University of Connecticut that prior to the Big East tournament, they were wondering if they could beat conference foe Notre Dame. Well, redemption in the semifinal, domination in the national final. Rick Pitino had a glorious moment last night. He tried to bring some of that magic from Atlanta to New Orleans. But in the end, the Huskies were like a steamroller. 93 to 60 again, the largest margin of victory in finals history. Gino Oriema has never lost in a national championship game. He is 8 and 0. So it's official. They have tied Tennessee and Pat Summit with eight national titles for each program. Let's go to Rebecca Lobo and Brianna Stewart. Expectations were sky high for you coming into this season. What is this moment like for you to lead your team to a national championship? Oh, this is unbelievable. I mean, this is what we thought about since the beginning of the season, and now to finally be here and actually win it, it's a, it's a great feeling, and I don't think it's going set, to set, set in for a while. You're a much different player than we saw a month ago. What changed for you in the postseason? I think I just really played really confident and stopped thinking. When I second guess myself, nothing, nothing good comes out of that. All right, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you. Now 23 points. Look at her folks. Nine of 15 shooting. Brianna, nine rebounds and three assists, and a new star is born for Connecticut. Seems to be a new one every year. This is a program that has generated some of the biggest stars in the history of women's college basketball. Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi, Maya Moore. Wow. And this is what the legendary Pat Summit had to say about Gino Oriema and UConn. Congratulations to Gino and the Connecticut Huskies on a remarkable season, an eighth national title. Gino, a proven champion and a leader in our game. Very classy gesture. Let's go to Holly. Well, Coach Ariema, after the Big East tournament, you'd lost to Notre Dame for a third time. What transformed your team in those weeks leading into this NCAA tournament? I, I just think we, we kind of grew up a little bit, and um, you know, a lot of the frustration that we had um, in losing, you know, we didn't win the regular season and we didn't win the tournament. Um, you know, I've said before, it's harder to win the Big East championship than it is to win a national championship. And I think our players just kind of collectively decided to give up a little bit of themselves. I think before that we were just kind of we were a good team of good players. But right after that as we talked we became a great team because everybody looked at everybody else in the eye and said, all right this is what I'm going to give up. This is what I'm going to stop doing to help our team and it was an amazing transformation. You told me before this game that you would describe this as the worst coaching job of your life. What does it say about you that that results in a national championship? Well, I think I was pretty good the last month, you know. Um, but leading up to that, I just felt I never felt like I had the the pulse of the team in my in the palm of my hand like I like to. Um, we we struggled. Me my me personally and my team, we struggled to connect a lot of times. Uh, uh, the new guys and and, and it, it was just hard. Uh, but my coaching staff was unbelievable. They just kept telling me, hang in there, hang in there, hang in there. They'll turn, they'll turn, they'll get it eventually. And you know what? They were right. They got it. Coach, have you, I know you have other seniors on this team, but Kelly Ferris has played with a passion and tenacity that is unparalleled. How do you describe her? Uh, you can't describe her. You really can't. She, she just has a special something about her that is uh, every, every kid that watched this game tonight should go home and say, you know what? I want to be like Kelly Farris when I grew up because that's exactly the way you play the game of basketball. And she's going to be great at everything she does the rest of her life because of the passion that she brings. And God bless her. I, I, I couldn't be happier for anybody. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Holly, Coach Oriema, thank you very much. And our Capital One player of the game is Brianna Stewart, a freshman that is a name you will hear for years to come 23 points 
nine rebounds in a UConn freshman championship game record. A tough way to finish for Louisville. They had a magical season and a magical run. It ends in defeat against the Huskies, who are national champions for the eighth time. We'll be back for the trophy presentation and a lot more still to come from New Orleans as Connecticut celebrates their eighth national title.